Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. My neck looks a bit weird to another live stream. We have the double game week 34 deadline stream. And I can already anticipate that this is going to be a mad one, but not for the wrong reasons, because I think recently it's been for leaks. I'm pretty confident we're not going to get too many leaks today, which is, I think, good, because then all the decisions revolve around who do you bring in, who do you bench, who do you sell, free hit confirmation as well as uh, two. Captaincies may be a big thing to discuss. So yeah, because of the games today, I don't know if you've seen, I think we've got like Luton, Brentford, we've got Burnley, Sheffield United, and then Arsenal play at 5.30. So maybe we'll get something around Arsenal, potentially, but hopefully not, to be honest. I think leaks ruin the game. <laughs> and I know as someone that obviously shares the leaks and looks for leaks because it is there. But if there was a way to just completely remove them, because I think guessing minutes is a is a good skill, right? I think that is one of the few things we have control over. It's what do you think the minutes will be like? And I actually think a lot of the decisions on free hit, they don't play at 5.30. When do they play? Oh, 7.30. There we go. Um, I think a lot of the, f the key decisions on free hit, especially are around like expected minutes, like which players do you think will play both games? And so if you get a bit of an advantage there, I, I don't love that. Anyway, Eggy is late. Eggy was fully on time, Matthew. I was actually early as a child. I was seven weeks early. There we go. Always been early. Always been on time at the very least. Eggy Weggy is never late. So let me know where you're tuning in from. Let me know what you're doing right now. Also, let me know. Let, you know let me just run a poll straight away. I want to know what you're doing this week. I want to know if you're on your free hit. I want to know if you've got free transfers. Are you taking hits? So before I even show you my team, what is your plan for game week 34? I'd imagine a lot of people in here might be on their free hit, but don't worry. It's not going to only be free hit discussion. So if you're not on your free hit this week, do not stress. There'll be plenty of other stuff. So um, free hit, free transfers, or minus four hit. Or minus eight hits or more. I'd love to know what your plan is for game week 34. Obviously, some people will be bench boosting this week, which is pretty fun as well. I think I, I, I probably only like 5%, I would imagine, of bench boosts active, but free hit, only one in my league. The, the thing is, my free hit looks like everyone else's non free hit team, but it was the same in 29. My, not, my game week 29 team looked like everyone else's free hit 29. So I just think we get to the same teams, but with different strategies, right? But with that being said, Here's the team. I, I'm not set on this at all. Uh, I, I'll be making changes right to the deadline because I'm finding this significantly more difficult than I thought I would. Everyone obviously wants three Arsenal, three Liverpool. That is a given. And most people want two or three Palace. You probably want Solanke. And then you've got one free spot to take a punt. I've gone for Brereton Diaz. The issue is... That doesn't make it easy. Knowing that you're going to have nine players from Palace, Arsenal and Liverpool, it almost makes it more difficult because every team, yeah, I would say all three of those teams have at least five options that are genuinely good considerations. For Palace, you've got Munoz, Eze, Elise, Mateta, Henderson, maybe even Mitchell, Anderson you could take a punt on. For Liverpool, I mean, you've got Virgil, Robertson, Trent, Alisson, Salah, Diaz, Jota, Darwin. For Arsenal, you've got Havertz, Saka, Gabriel, Wyatt, Saliba, Rye is even an okay option, as you can see in my team. Like, there are just so many options. And then you've also got some of the fun punts as well. You've got, like, a Brereton Diaz. Sarabia could be good now that we think he'll be on pens. You could go for McBurney. You could go for an Everton attacker or, like, someone like a Cliver. It, it maybe seems easy at first because you want to load up on Liverpool and Arsenal, but there are just so many combinations. And, like, let's say, for example, I actually decide I want to go for double defence. And I want to remove, sorry, double Arsenal defense. I want to remove Virgil and I want to put Gabriel in there. Well, if I do that, I then need to remove one of my other Arsenal players. And if I do that, I then only have two Liverpool. So like you change one spot on the free hit and it ends up just changing the entire team. And as someone's just rightly said as well, honestly, like single gaming players as well. So Bruno, Garnacho, if we think he's going to start. Ollie Watkins continues to be overlooked every single week and just absolutely smashes in the points. I wouldn't in a million years on a free hit go for a single gaming player, but that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. This week, there will be, I would say, at least 20, 25 single game week players that outscore lots of doublers. But trying to predict who they are, I think, is more difficult. Statistically speaking, if you give a similarly good player two fixtures versus one, you would back the one with two fixtures. So if you're giving me the choice of someone like Brereton, Diaz, Elise, Eze, Havertz, Jota, even if Jota doesn't start both, Diaz... I would prefer all of those to a single game week, but that's just the way that I play. Doesn't necessarily mean that that's like the best way to play. Um, so there we go. 
Anik says minus eight from Haaland to Mateta. Is it worth considering? What do you mean minus? I assume like you're saying it for an extra minus four. So four minus four, would I do Haaland to Mateta? No, I probably wouldn't. I'd do it for free comfortably, but I probably wouldn't do it, do it for a hit. OP Talent says free hit, third Arsenal, Liverpool and Palace. Munoz, Diaz and Erdegaard. Or, so A, A is Minos, Diaz, and Erdogan. By the way, these combinations I'm struggling with already. So please don't expect me to give you perfect advice because I'm changing my mind all the time. But anyway, A is Minos, Diaz, Erdegaard, Saliba, Diaz, Elise, Robertson, Erdegaard, Elise. Dear Lord. I mean, in isolation, when I look at that, my initial instinct was I really like Robertson, Erdegaard, and Elise. So I'm going to stick with that because I could just look at that all day and give you different opinions constantly, OP. But when I looked at that, I thought Robertson, Erdegaard, Elise feels like the high upside combo for me. I'm jealous of both Erdegaard and Elise. They're players that I'd like to get into my team. Mr. Shazam already dropping in with a super chat. Thank you very much, my man. I don't know if I should. I now know your name. I don't know if I should say your name. I don't know if that's a, a secret. But thank you for once again, the super chat. Morning, Ross. Hope you and Pickle are well. Pickle's OK. She's wrapped up in bed currently tinkering with her free hit over there. Um, you can say it louder, go on. Hello. Hello. Uh, your wisdom on the following, please. Not free hitting this week. Okay. Bench Branthwaite or Eight Nuri? Bench, I would bench Eight Nuri simply because I think Branthwaite is more likely to start both. Replace Bradley with Van Dyke, Trent or Robbo. Cheers. I am, I would say for me, Robbo, Van Dyke, Trent at the moment, but that's based on the fact that I don't think Trent starts both. If you think there's a small chance Trent does start both and you want to risk it, I'd have Trent at the very top. It comes down to your expectation of minutes, but the safest option is Van Dyke. The highest upside option is Trent. I th I find Robbo like a, like a middle ground between Trent and Van Dyke, right? So Trent's the high upside, Van Dyke's the safe one. So you've got like opposite, opposite ends of the spectrum. I would say Robertson is neither the safest nor the highest upside, but he's somewhere in the middle. And I think there's a good chance he does start both. And he also does carry some attacking threat as well. So FPL Machine says, Hi mate, two options to bring in Eze to Foden this game week. In 35, do Darwin to Isaac and Saka to Son. 36, Eze to Gordon. Yep, nice transfers. Salah to Foden. Or, okay, 34 roll, 35 E, Zach Sun, Gordon for Darwin, Salah, Sarabia. Thank you. Oh, there's so many more things I need to look at with your team and to know your strategy, bench boost. Just so many things there. Oh, that's such a tough one. I like the idea of getting Eze in this week. So I would opt for number one. And I like the idea of Darwin to Isaac, Saka to Son, but you don't get Gordon. Oh, that's such a tough one. I still think I prefer the first option, FPL Machine, just, but I think they're very, very close. Tanishk says, my lord, I'm already like 12 messages behind. <laughs> Elise on free hit? Yeah, I like Elise a lot as an option on free hit. Absolutely. Is Ben White an option? Absolutely. Love Ben White. If you think he'll start both, of course. Tanishk says, Hi, Ross. As an Arsenal fan, you should consider Erdegaard over Havertz. I am absolutely doing exactly that. Erdegaard loves playing against Wolves and Chelsea, especially Wolves. Havertz might get benched for Wolves after being overworked. I'm going through this exact thought process in my head. And then what I've also thought about is, do I just do Havertz and Munoz, Munoz, who knows, Munoz, just because I can't pronounce his name anyway, to Elise and White? I mean, we'll discuss that in a second. Let me know in the chat. Havertz and Munoz versus White and Elise. I've thought about just maybe just... Uh, it's so boring, but just backing double Arsenal defence and just not playing that game. Or, like you say, just do Havertz to Erdegaard. I just think if, if Havertz does start both, he is a better option than Erdegaard for me. I'm not saying he'll score more points because I've got no idea, but in, on paper, he's a better option. Saliba, Elise, Darwin, or Van Dijk, Havertz, Mateta? That... I find that very difficult because the option on the left, I don't own any of those players and the option on the right, I own all three. So inherently, I, I obviously prefer Van Dijk, Havertz, Mateta. But I think the one on the left is, is cheeky. It's very differential. Hi, Ross. Free hit 34. Is it too risky to go for Darwin, Elise and Robertson instead of Mateta, Luis Diaz and Van Dijk? Very similar question. No, it's, there's no such thing as too risky. It just doesn't exist. Unless you're literally selecting players that are very unlikely to play any minutes, then that's risky. But if you're just saying like, can I pick Jota and Erdegaard over Diaz and Havertz? Absolutely, go for it. It's a single week. Like anything can happen across Game Week 34. 
if it was like longer term, I'd say, oh, no, I prefer this player because of the data and because of X, Y, Z and the fit. Like, no, in a single week, just back yourself. And if, if you've got a feeling that one of the more riskier options could do well, go for it. Brereton Diaz is a much riskier option than someone like probably like an Elise or, or a Luis Diaz. They're probably slightly more safe options in terms of returns. But I, I like the idea of backing myself. Bench boost, Pickford, eight Nuri, Gusto and Haaland, seven doublers. Okay, your bench boost is Pickford. Eight Nuri's only going to start one. Gusto against... No, don't like that. Because I, I don't I don't think eight Nuri's confirmed to start either. And if he does, it's only going to be one. Gusto's got Arsenal. Haaland's a doubt. Pickford, I don't think, keeps more than one clean sheet. I don't hate it, Ajay, but I, w I wouldn't bench boost that, no. Bass, Dumb, Bass Double Dam. Bass Double Dam, what a name. Huge fan here. Always big tips. I have no free hit with Van Dyke, Cher, Gabriel. Okay, give me your team. I don't know who to bench and what do you think of Kerkes? I actually really like Kerkes this week. I I, mean, I I wouldn't necessarily look to bring Kerkes in, but I've seen a few people with him, like, benching him. Don't bench Kerkes. He's got some attacking threat. Due to the injuries that they've got, I actually expect Kerkes to play because I think, is it Otara? I think will play slightly further forward. I think Kerkes could be an okay shout. Out of those players, who would I bench? I mean, out of the defenders, it's obviously Fabian Cher. And out of the attackers, if you've got a bench like two of them, it's probably Palmer and Palmer and Foden. I don't know that I could bench Isaac at the moment. I'd probably bench Palmer and Foden and start Isaac. I think Palmer's the obvious one to bench. And I know that sounds crazy and everyone will say, no, it's Cole Palmer, but he's got the most difficult fixture in the league. So if you're not going to bench Palmer here, like obviously you could just say you never bench Palmer, but I just think this is this is the fixtures to do it. His ownership will be on the floor as well. You could see that as an advantage, but he's not going to massively punish you, I suppose. What are people saying in the poll, by the way? So 57% of you are on your free hit, 19% free transfers, minus four is at 16%, and minus eight or more is 8%. So uh, approximately a quarter of you are taking a hit, just under a quarter are using free transfers and just over half are have their free hit active. Hi, Ross. Hi, Mr. Beardy. Good to see you. Haaland on free hit, yes or no? Not is not for me. I mean, just back a doubler, especially when he's a bit of a doubt. I mean, I still expect Haaland to play, by the way. I think it'll be fine, but it's just not for me. Just have some fun with it. It's just not it's not fun picking Haaland on your free hit, is it? Bushman Gaming says, Hi, Ross. Got Verge, Salah, Darwin, Gabriel, Saka, Eze, and Solanke. Nuri, Huang, Haaland, and Branthwaite need to bench one. Would you take hits wildcard next week? Okay, is that your entire team? Are you saying you need to bench one of all of these options? Or you need to bench one of Nuri, Huang, Haaland, and Branthwaite? I think eight Nuri's the obvious one to bench there. Just because it sounds like he's not going to start the first game. Could start the second one. But I think, I think all the others are probably more likely to get either better minutes or they have more upside. I don't think you necessarily need to take hits. I mean, I can't see, I don't, that's obviously not your entire team, but it doesn't to me look like you need to take hits. Don't worry if you can't field 11 doublers, by the way. Could I see the likes of Foden, Fernandez, Isaac, Gordon outscoring some of these doublers? In fact, I will confirm to you now they will. <laughs> I can confirm that one of my doublers will get outscored by pretty much all of the major single gaming options because it will just happen. Just because someone's got two fixtures. If you look at all of the players in my team, there would have been a two two game weeks, sorry, a two like sort of game period where they blanked two games in a row. So it can happen, but you just want to increase your chances a bit of getting those returns. So Anya Rag says, on a bench boost, would you sell eight Nuri for a minus four? Oh. No. No, I wouldn't. It would probably just put me off the bench boost slightly. But if you are confirming that you want a bench boost, I'd probably still have eight Nuri. The fact that you only have 1.2 million in the bank probably puts me off as well because you can't get to Saliba, you can't get to White, you can't get to Virgil, Robertson. You'd be going to someone like a Munoz or a Mitchell and that's just like, they're fine. Like I've got one in my team, but not for a minus four, I don't think. Morning, Ross. Who are the non-negotiables free here? I would say the only non-negotiables for me, but everyone's negotiable, is Solanke, Saka, Salah, Eze, one Arsenal defender and one Liverpool defender. That's the only six. The other five around that, you choose as and when. But yeah, Salah, Saka, Eze, Solanke, one Arsenal, one Liverpool defender. At the very least, that would be kind of my my structure for my free hit that I build around. And I've, I've not gone off that at any point. It's just kind of the the combinations, like I said. I, I'm really not sure about this Raya-Munoz combination. I, I, th I feel like Henderson and White might be better. 
but I just like the idea of a punt on Munoz. And Raya is the lowest owned Arsenal defender. I'm just, I'm just trying to tap into some variants. And when I mean tap into variants, someone said in your video, why are you over... Why are you... <laughs> what was it? Why are you trying to justify getting lucky by using big words? I'm not... That That is literally what I mean when I say tap into... I'm saying get a bit lucky. But I'm still selecting an Arsenal defender. I'm still selecting a Crystal Palace defender. I'm just selecting a lower owned combination in the hope that I get a goal from my defender and more saves from my goalkeeper, for example. You know what I mean? It's just, when I say tapping into variants, I do literally mean just getting a bit lucky. Start Kirkes over Zabani. Yes. Minus four for Henderson. I don't know who you're taking out. In most cases, no. Unless you've got a really bad goalkeeper, I probably wouldn't bother. Hi, Ross. Would you play Garnacho or Palmer? I'm still even contemplating doing Garnacho to Pereira and Diaz, but no free hit. If it was for free, I'd be tempted to make the move, Stephen. Firstly, thank you for being a member for 31 months. That is a stupid amount of time, but I really do appreciate it. Uh, Garnacho or Palmer? I'd start Garnacho. But that's because I'm, I'm heavy on fixtures. Palmer's a much better asset than Garnacho. Chat, who would you start out of Garnacho and Palmer this week? I, I guarantee the chat probably think to, they'd start Palmer rather than Garnacho. But yeah, lots of, lots of people um, taking hits that aren't on their free hit this week. But I don't blame you. Like, it's a nice double to attack. If I wasn't free hitting this week, I wouldn't be averse to taking some hits. Uh, Sam says, good morning, Ross. Hope you're well, mate. Bench boost only. Two free transfers. Doubt Darwin and Haaland form and minutes. What are your thoughts on moving one to Isaac this week? Oh, the thing is, longer term, you want Haaland. I know you're saying like you're a bit unsure about him, which is fair enough, but you're going to want him back. So how you... Do you know what I don't mind, actually, Sam? I don't mind Haaland to Isaac this week, if you really fancy that as a punt, and then you do Darwin to Haaland next week. I don't think you can sell Darwin this week. So Darwin's off the table as being sold, for me at least, especially for someone like Isaac. You could do Haaland to Isaac and then do Darwin to Haaland next week to get Haaland back. But I think you're going to want Haaland back pretty soon. I would probably just avoid it. I would just make another move, I think. If it was me anyway. Chris says, good morning, Raptor. I'm thinking of taking a minus four for Mitchell and then bench boosting with Flecken, Palmer, Zabani and Mitchell. Have 10 doublers and Haaland. Hmm. Do you know what? I think I would. Without seeing the rest of your team, just, just based on what you've told me, Chris, I would probably do that. Yeah, I think that's a that that constitutes a genuine consideration for bench boost. Can you deep dive in, deep dive into Liverpool defensive stats, preferring Virgil at the moment? I can just tell you off the top of my head, across the season, Trent has the best, then Robertson. Van Dijk's attacking threat and assist threat this season has been really, really poor. But historically. He's very good from set pieces. He hasn't lost any height. He's still a big boy and he'll still throw himself at corners. So I'm not saying ignore the stats for Virgil, but Virgil hasn't suddenly become really poor from corners. I think if a corner finds its way to, to Virgil in the box, then it'll, it'll attack it. So th that's kind of my perspective on it. But yeah, Virgil van Dijk's attacking threat this season has been lower than it has in previous seasons. Robertson's actually been pretty decent, but obviously, like I said, if you're going attacking threat and upside, it's Trent, Robbo, Van Dyke. If you're going minutes, I think it's Verge, Robbo, Trent. I think it literally flips on its head. That's why I said I like Robertson as kind of that middle ground player. By the way, if you are enjoying the stream, and whew, I whistled, if you are enjoying the stream, can you please make sure to drop a like? Really do appreciate it. And also subscribe as well. We're very close to 116,000 subscribers. That's a lot of people. But yeah, I, I would appreciate if you do consider doing both those things. Thank you. On bench boost, would you do Mateta or Izak? Mateta. Mateta would be a one-week pun. Izak has great fixtures coming plus a double. I have no other chips. Okay, actually, KG, it depends. If next week you're... If next week you, you think you might have a free transfer to get Izak anyway, I'd go Mateta. But if you've also got like barely any Spurs, barely any Chelsea, and you've got other transfers you want to make, maybe I would go for Izak. So think about what you want to do next week. If you've got the free transfer next week to get Izak anyway... Do Mateta, otherwise go Isaac now. I don't mind for people that have no chips left going for the likes of Isaac, Bruno Fernandes, because they're fine for this week and then obviously they serve you well long term. You don't want to be completely blinded by game week 34 if you're not free hitting and wild carding in the next couple of weeks. My team is Raya Aiton. Okay, you give me your team, Tyler. My bench is Son Petrovic Udogi Lasselle. It's not a great bench. 2.4 in the bank, two free transfers, and bench boost chips left. What are your tips, lol? Um, well, Lascelles has to go at some point, so you might as well get rid of him now. You'd want to keep you doggy Petrovic and Son. 
Manise, I don't love as an option. I think I would do here. I would... Oh, you've got Bradley, though, as well. God, this is a bit of a disaster, isn't it? <laughs> I would go... If this was my team, I would do, like, Lascelles to... I would probably go, like, Lascelles... Have you got any... Oh, God, this isn't easy. Probably Lascelles to Munoz or Mitchell. And then I would do Muniz to Mateta. So two free transfers, I'd bring in two Palace players. Muniz to Mateta and then Lascelles to Munoz. Something like that, Tyler. And then, obviously, from 35 onwards, you might have to take a few hits to, to start to build towards that bench boost 37. Joel says, to start, Trent versus McBurney and Pickford versus Allison. I probably prefer Trent to McBurney, to be honest. Uh, Pickford versus Allison. In isolation, I prefer Allison. But if you're already on triple Liverpool, then obviously Pickford's fine. Masum says, would you say your tip is the best tip? Um, yeah. No comment. I, d I do give great tips. With a s. S. Sus question. Swap Palmer or Garnacho for Havertz for a minus four. Swap Palmer or Garnacho for Havertz for a minus four. Depends what your chip strategy is, but in isolation, yes, assuming that you're wildcard 35. Even not wildcard 35, I don't love the idea of selling either of them because I think Palmer and Garnacho from 35 onwards are really, really good. So it really depends on your overall chip strategy. James says, no wildcard next week. Son to Fernandez, Eze for a minus four. Um, No wildcard next week. Son to Fernandez, Eze for a minus four. No. You're going to want Son straight back in. So unless you are planning to literally go back, back, then no. And I know you might say Spurs fixtures aren't great, but Sonny can still do well in those games. What are your thoughts on Kirkes? Like to play left wing because of injuries. Played there versus United and put up loads of XGI. I've got a feeling Otara could play there and Kirkes could drop back into left back. But either way, yeah, he's expected to get good minutes. I think Kirk Kirkes is a really good option. I do expect him to start both. I'm not going to pick him on free here. But I, I do think that if you've got him, you absolutely start him. And if you want to take a punt, go for it. Is it not weird that all 50% plus of teams that are on free hit rely on three teams? Liverpool, Arsenal and Palace. Shouldn't we consider some fun punts? You're not, you're not going to go in without three Liverpool and three Arsenal. And I think if you do, fair enough, you might get away with it. But I would say objectively before the deadline, I think it's a very bad decision to go without Liverpool and Arsenal, right? So let's say that six of your players are from those. Yeah, you could go for one Palace instead. But if you're removing Palace players, you're relying then on the likes of Sheffield United, Wolves, Bournemouth. Like, it doesn't get much better. Everton, right? These aren't teams that aren't are any better than Palace. So I get what you're saying. Maybe you remove one or two of your Palace players and go a little bit different there. But for me, I, do, I just think these are the three best teams to invest in. Polkit says, hi, Ross. Love, your, love you, mate. I love you too, Polkit. Thank you for being here as always. Can I have your help, please? Two free transfers. Gordon to Eze. Okay, what are you doing? You are wildcard 35. Okay, that's fine then. So I don't mind Gordon to Eze. Uh, eight Nuri to Mitchell slash Tarkovsky or EH to Mateta or Foden to Luis Diaz. Oh, God. Um, oh, that's a tough one. I think Foden to Diaz. My favorite options is probably eight Nuri to Mitchell Min Munoz, Foden to Diaz and then... Haaland to Mateta would be my favoured options in order. I, I think if you've got Haaland, you probably keep him. Unless you unless that is the only transfer you can foresee improving your team overall. I think you just you just hang on to him. Bass Dumbledam again with the Super Chat says, No more chips left. Who should I bring in for Doughty as a free transfer? Fabian Scher, Munoz, Dallo, Kirkes, or someone else? Also with the eye on the future. Big fan. Thank you very much. Who should you bring in for Doughty? I think Fabian Scher or Dallow, probably, if you've got an eye on the future as well, like let's say you just really need to hang on to this player and you don't want to make any more transfers, it kind of has to be Scher or Dallow. I'd go Fabian Scher. Attacking threat, really good fixtures. Newcastle are improving slightly defensively. Yeah, I'd go Fabian Scher. David says, minus four for Watkins slash Mateta in for Tony. I wouldn't do a minus four for Watkins in for Tony. I'd be slightly more tempted by Mateta, but if Tony starts, he's great this week. But yeah, I, I would be happy doing the Mateta transfer, I think. I'm not sure I would do Watkins in for a minus four. Is Kivior a shout? I still don't expect Kivior to start either game in the double. And if he does, he's only starting one. I think Zinchenko starts at least one in the double, potentially even two. So yeah, I'm not backing Kivior particularly for this, for this double. Triple captain Salah. Yeah, if you've got no other chip to play this week and you've got the triple captain chip left, it's either, I think, probably Salah this week 
Palmer in 35, Palmer in 37, or you go Haaland in 37. I think they, they're probably your four options overall. NG says, would you bench boost Semenyo, Pickford, Branthwaite, Mitchell, Byrne, Dallow, bench? Oh, sorry. So, sorry. Semenyo, Pickford, Branthwaite, and then one of Mitchell, Byrne, Dallow. Um... Semenyo pick for yeah, I absolutely would. Yeah, that's a very strong bench boost, NG. I would go for that, honestly. You might not get two starts out of Semenyo, but I think you will. You might not get two starts out of Branthwaite, but I think overall, looking at that bench, you've got three or four doublers. I think it's pretty strong. As you say, I know you've got a few single game players in your team, but I think that's fine, NG. I'd go for it. Jay Saunders says, Morning, Ross. Good luck on the free hit. Thank you very much. I'm going bold with McBurney. Got a good feeling. What are your thoughts on Neto goalkeeper? I love McBurney. He's my first sub. But I'd like to get him in. Neto goal. I think Neto's being underrated. I'm seeing people take Neto out of their team with their free transfers. Neto's a save point monster. He will get a lot of saves. If you keep to clean sheet as well, I could see Neto outscoring a lot of our goalkeepers, honestly. So, yeah, I think Neto's fine. If you want to go for him, absolutely fine as well. Dubravka to Henderson or Haaland to Mateta? Probably Dubravka to Henderson in isolation. I think you just... Haaland to Mateta feels like it could go a lot worse than Dubravka to Henderson, I think. So yeah, I, I would go for the former. Hi, Raptor. Do you have any Tony news? Uh, no Tony news yet. Start Tony or Hoyland? Oh, I would still start Hoyland in that situation. Got the best fixture in, in the league. I know Tony's on penalties and he's a better asset, but with the doubts around Tony, I would start Hoyland. If we do get any early team news around Tony, I'll share it. And if Tony does start, then I would definitely start Tony. But as things stand, I'd have Hoyland. Sean says, you have loved Darwin and now you just throw him away on a double game week. How can we forgive you? Mateta better than Darwin, really. It does feel horrible. How am I going into a double game week for Liverpool without Darwin? But he's just been so bad. I think I've finally seen the light. <laughs> it, took me, it took me two and a half years. But I was just watching him and I was just like, he's just not very good at finishing. <laughs> and I know people are going to be like, oh my God, Raptor, I've been commenting on every single one of your videos for the last two and a half years saying this. But he's just not good. He's not finishing his chances. And at some point, you just say he just isn't going to. And in a single week, like, at some point, he will. I still do believe he will have a game where just one game, it all clicks for him, and he scores, like, four or five goals. I think that will happen. But when that will happen, I've got no idea. And so I don't think you can just keep owning a player that just isn't isn't doing it. And I'll probably regret that, to be honest. I'm probably going to go, oh, my God, why don't I have Darwin when he scores loads? But it took you long enough. Exactly. I love, genuinely, I still love Darwin. I'm still a big fan of his, which is weird as a Man United fan, I know. But yeah, I'm just not, I'm not sure I can continue to back him in FPL. It's really, it really hurts my rank every time I do it. Because I back against the likes of Solanke when I do it. And this week I back against Mateta. They're just safe for minutes. Not as exciting by all means. The data's not quite as good, but they actually finish their chances. Sam says, on bench boost, would you take hits to remove eight Nuri and Powell? Don't have any chips left. Happy with the rest of the team, just not sure on their minutes. If you have the money to go from one of eight Nuri or Powell to an Arsenal or a Liverpool defender and you've got a free spot, that is the only player that I would take a hit to go from eight Nuri or Powell to. So yeah, if you can get to a Virgil or a Robertson or a Gabriel or a Saliba with one free transfer, um, sorry, with, with the money in the bank without having to take two hits, then yeah, I probably would do it. Nathan says, thoughts, I'm top of all of my mini leagues and so want to play safe. My free hit, Pickford, Van Dijk, Saliba, Gabriel, Elise, Eze, Saka, Luis Diaz, Salah, Mateta, Solanke. Yeah, I've, that's a, that I would say that is a relatively safe and good free hit, by the way. It's not just safe, it's also very good. I would argue if you really want to play safe, you go for Haaland, right? Because everyone in your mini league probably still owns Haaland. So if you're going, I mean, super protective, where you just want to protect where you are, Maybe you try and squeeze Haaland in and go a little bit cheaper somewhere else. But other than that, I think it's really nice. Consason Palmer to Eze Elise Trent for a minus four. Yeah, considering your wild card in 35 pulse, I like that a lot. I have no issue with those. You'll lose a lot of money, by the way, on Son and Palmer. You've probably got money tied up, but that isn't a reason to just inherently keep someone, I don't think. Chat, I need to start thinking about my free hit a little bit more in a second. I need to start thinking about my free hit because this is probably not what I'm actually going to go into the deadline with. I've been, oh no, I've been handed, I've been handed FPL Pickle's phone with her free hit. Let's have a look in a second. Um, um, right. 
I'll have a look at that free hit in two you seconds. Can let it just sit there, you? No, I was putting your phone on D and D. Um. Okay, chat. Here is. It's the thing is I can't ever show it because the green screen. People are gonna hate it. No, you can't see it at all. There's no point. I can't show it. It blends out all the background. You can't see the players' names. Oh. You'd have to um upload it somewhere. Actually, airdrop it to my... Mm, no, actually, that's not going to work. I swear you've done it before. You've shown my team on stream. Yeah, it doesn't really work, but you can't really see it. I ha I ha since my OBS, I, I don't I don't think 5,000 people want to listen to this conversation, but I, since I updated my OBS, you, you, the, gr it, the green screen ruins everything. Oh, okay. Um, okay, sorry. Sorry, chat. Lost where I was. Use my two free transfers on Diaz and Eze. Do I transfer at eight Nuri for Van Dyke or Haaland to Darwin for a minus four? Oh, eight Nuri to Van Dyke feels good, but it is a minus four. I would still be tempted by eight Nuri to Van Dyke for a minus four and just hope you get that bullet header, but I wouldn't do ha Haaland to Darwin for a minus four because I think Haaland and Darwin could get very similar minutes. Morning, Ross. On free hit, struggling between Erdegaard and Havertz. What's your thoughts? Oh, God, Havertz is a better player and a better pick for FPL. I I do genuinely believe that unless Erdegaard gets more minutes. If Erdegaard gets more minutes, then Erdegaard's a better pick. So I, I guess my answer to that, Paul, is if you think Havertz starts both, I would go Havertz. If you think Erd if you think he doesn't, I would go Erdegaard. And that's kind of what I'm discussing. I'm going back and forth in my mind. I might just go for Erdegaard for safety of mins, but It might, yeah, it will work. It would just be funny to look at. She's gone like black and white with it. Okay, chat. What do we think of very, very quickly? Of course, this is FPL Pickles team. This is my girlfriend's team. What do we think? Free hit. So I I'll read it out for those of you not looking. Um, Allison Anderson, cheeky different Crystal Palace defender there. White um, Van Dijk, Eze Salah, Saka, Erdegaard, Brereton, Brereton Diaz, Mateta Solanke. So Allison, Allison's probably a differential. Anderson's a bit differential, and also Erdegaard. It's nice. It's relatively. It's like relatively template structure, but also a few differentials in there. I like it. You can read what the chat thing. So yeah, I don't know between Erdegaard and Havertz. I think they're fine. Looks fine. I like it. Top. Good team. Good free hit. Looks very good. Chat. Chat, 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 chat. Hear me out. Why are you not that nice to me? What is it that you're missing? Good for corners. I know it's very good for corners, isn't it? She's almost guaranteed a bullet header there. Wait, do you have White or Gabrielle? White. If you slap Gabrielle in there, that is bullet header central, that team. Yeah, <laughs> bullet header central. Wait, rubbish team. Rubbish well, face map. No, no, don't, don't, don't listen to the trolls. I think it's a lovely team. Better than eggs draft, someone said. Yeah, you want yeah, you want to find that balance, I think. On free here, Eze is captain, fine. Love Eze as captain. I just I would genuinely kick myself if I try to go different with captaincy, and this is the week that Salah decides to refine his form. And I know people will say we give too much weighting to how good Salah used to be. It's nonsense. Like Salah scores a, an open play goal, uh, gets a penalty and gets an assist, and everyone's like, see, Salah was the obvious captain. Like the, the narrative switch is so easy. Salah is and always will be an excellent, excellent FP option just because he's in a bit of a slump now. You, this is what I say to people, and it sounds like a very obvious point. A player will not always be on a hot streak, and a player will not always be on a cold streak, right? At some point, it ined inevitably switches. Maniz was scoring every single week, and people were like, how do you not have Maniz? He's so cheap. He then blanks a few games in a row, and no one's talking about Maniz now. Same with Salah. Salah gets a couple of open play goals, and everyone's all of a sudden saying, Salah's an obvious pick. You've got to have him in your wild. I Here's my, here's my bet. At the moment, no one will have Salah in their wildcard 35. If Salah hauls this week, I guarantee everyone wildcarding in 35 has Salah. There's my prediction. No, they keep uh, Salah. Yeah. Oh, really no. Yeah. Same, same with Saka, though. Lots of people saying he's not a good option. Saka hauls this week. People will be trying to squeeze him into their wildcards. At some point, it switches from hot streak to cold streak and, and vice versa. Minus eight, Gusto, Ryan Eight, Nuri, Son, Harlan to Virgil, White, Eze, Darwin. I mean, in isolation, they are all good moves with upgrades. I don't know about the Harlan to Darwin move. 
but you might you will probably need that to fund the rest of it so in isolation i like all of those but is it worth a minus eight maybe i can't see the rest of your team i don't know your strategy tom tom 977 says white elise darwin or robertson havertz mateta i've answered that exact question I've got Robertson, Havertz, and Mateta, so I'm inherently going to say that. If you're asking me a question about which players I prefer, and the players as the option are in my team, I'm, I'm obviously going to say the ones in my team. Yes, this is my free hit, by the way. Someone said, is this free hit? I, I love that you think I could get to this team without a free hit, but yeah, it's, it's a free hit team. Start Palmer or Gordon? Gordon playing away. Palmer. Yeah, I'd, I'd be tempted to start Palmer there, because Gordon is... like it. It's got to a stage now with, with Gordon where he just is bad away and he's good at home. Like, I kept thinking, is it just a coincidence? Like, is it going to suddenly change? But he's just not. He's so good at home and he's just not away. And also, I do think Palace are good defensively. That's the whole point of picking a Palace defender. So, yeah, I would maybe be slightly more inclined to, to start Palmer and bench Gordon. But I think that is close. Start Kilman or Mikalenko. Both have two fix. I would start Mikalenko for the attacking threat. Minus four to get eight Nuri to Kirkes or Burn for 37 prep. Uh, I don't know. Like I like a minus four for either, either of those. I think I'll just do it next week if you want to. Or if eight Nuri's fit, he's got Luton at home next week. I think I would leave that for now. And I'd do eight Nuri to Burn in 36 when Burn's got Burnley away. When Burn's got Burnley. Matthew says, hello, would you start Palmer or eight Nuri? Palmer. Because I don't, we, we, as, unless Gary O'Neill's lying, eight Nuri's not starting both. So it's basically a single game week for eight Nuri or a single game week for Palmer. I think in that case, you always back Palmer. Isn't Kunya Mateta that song from The Lion King? <laughs> yeah, it is. All of my comments this week have just been like, how are you not uh, singing? Um, it's not, well, it's not Kunya Mateta, Akuna Matata. But I could sing Akuna Matata. Do you want me to sing to you, chat? I don't think you'd want me to sing to you. It's not the best. Rico to Munoz or Van Dyke. I think if you can get to Van Dyke, you go Van Dyke. Abdul Wasik says, Hi, Ross. Have 13 doublers, including Branthwaite and Aiton Nuri, single game with Kaharland and Palmer. Chip lefts, bench boost and free hit. Zero free transfer. Should I bench boost or wait for 35? Free hit 37. That sounds like a great bench boost to me. I'd bench boost that, Abdul. Yeah, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't bench boost that. If you've got 13 doublers, even though obviously one of them is Aiton Nuri, it's not ideal. I'd still probably bench boost it. Is Trent not a good option? Trent's a great option. My issue with Trent is that if you don't think he starts both, I think Van Dyke's maybe slightly better. And if you think Robertson starts both, then I'd still probably rather have him than Trent. It comes down to your expectation of Trent's minutes. Some people seem to be really sure that Trent's starting both. If you are sure that Trent starts both, go for Trent. Hamza says, good morning, Ross. This is my first ever Super Chat. Thank you then very much, Hamza. I do appreciate it. Let's drop a like. I forget that I can actually like Super Chats. Um, I'm chasing rank big time on free hit. I have captaincy on Brereton Diaz. Him or Havertz for the armband? Um... Oh. Mm. Havertz. If Havertz starts both, he's a much better... I, I would go Havertz instead of Brereton Diaz. But only if you're pretty sure he starts both. If there are any doubts, maybe you do go for Brereton Diaz. Brereton Diaz. Brereton Diaz. I, th I think Havertz for captain is actually quite cheeky. I like it a lot. But if he's, if he's benched in that Wolves game, you're essentially captaining Havertz against Chelsea, <laughs> which is awful. You need him to start the Wolves game. I'm a little bit concerned. It's one of the reasons I've kind of switched to Raya and I might switch to Erdogan. I'm just a bit concerned that that there might be quite heavy rotation for Arsenal in this Wolves game. I know people will say, right, the argument seems to be Arsenal are literally just playing for the league now. Why would they rest players? And it's not like resting them for few, for other competitions. It's like the, the, the analogy I used, and it's not a very good analogy, is let's say I'm running a marathon on Saturday. It doesn't mean that I run a marathon Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to pep, prep for the marathon on Saturday. Do you know what I mean? It, you need at some point a bit of a rest to allow you to perform at an optimal level. Just because this is the only competition they have now doesn't mean that there won't be players that still need a bit of a rest to perform optimally. Because you say run them into the ground, but what you don't want is come game week 37, if Arsenal are still in the title race, but they are absolutely dead on their feet and they've got to go away to Old Trafford, as much as people laugh at United, it's not an easy place to go for some teams, especially the bigger ones, actually. I see that as a potential slip up for them if they're at that point so fatigued that they can't even walk and run. And it will get to that point. So... I'm not saying that he's going to rotate the entire team. I just wonder if this Wolves game might be the point when he goes, Saka gets a rest, Havertz gets a rest. 
one of Gabriel or White get a rest. I don't know. I could be completely off. He could literally just start his best 11. Who knows? Let me know in the chat what you think about Arsenal rotation. Jay Pup says, I think Erdegaard has a fire lit in him now and Saka tends to tire out at the end of the season. My gut says Erdegaard and two Arsenal defenders, but I'm scared of not having Saka. I think if your gut says that, go for it because you'll be more annoyed if that if that ends up being right, Saka gets benched in one, Erdegaard smashes it and Arsenal keep a couple of clean sheets. You'll be like, why didn't I back myself? So back yourself. Saka's ownership being higher shouldn't be the reason you pick him. I'm not picking Saka due to ownership. I'm picking him due to, I think he's still the best Arsenal asset and he's on penalties. And I, I, I think Saka is not one that will be benched. If I had to guess, I think he'll start both. He'll still get early subs in both, but he'll start both. Do you reckon all of the following start, Garnacho, Foden, Branthwaite? Yes, I do. One of Van Dyke, Robertson, Tre by the way, Garnacho and Foden play this weekend before their Prem game. So if they get injured, then you're screwed or they get a knock or something. One of Van Dyke, Robertson, Trent and Jota Diaz and why are chasing? I think if you're chasing, go for the upside of Robertson, Trent or I think I still think I think Diaz is better than Jota though, just for expected minutes. I'd go for Robertson and Diaz just because they're the two that I think are the best options out of those. Yeah, maybe I am th overthinking rotation. Some people seem to think that I'm overthinking it a little bit. Why do you not have white? Um, I don't know, to be honest. Let me, let me answer a few more of your questions and then I'll talk about my free hit a little bit. I just want to catch up because I'm a little bit behind. No free hit wildcard 35. Okay. Harlan to Watkins or Foden to Eze or Elise free transfer. I don't like Harlan to Watkins. Much prefer Foden to Eze. Thank you for all your help this season. Top of my mini league. Well done, John. I think, yeah, I don't get Harlan to Watkins because I think Harlan is always a better option than Watkins. So I would go Foden to Eze. I, th I prefer Eze to Elise just for expected minutes. And I also do still think he's on penalties as well. B Max is Power to Van Dyke, Munoz White or Harlan to Mateta. Uh, Power to Van Dyke, I'd go. Hi, Ross. What do we think about starting at Bernie and free hit? Not really interested in Mateta. Have Elise or Darwin. I think McBurney has a good chance of starting both, but I've spoke to three, only three, three Sheffield United fans, and all three of them seem to think McBurney's a slight rotation risk. And so it's just enough to put me off. Because McBurney could still do damage in one of the games. If he only plays Burnley or only plays United, he could do well. But to select him over someone like a Darwin or to select him over someone like a... I mean, who else have you got to choose from, really? Mateta or Solanke. Like, I just... For me, it's just not worth it. So I, I I, would prefer one of the other options. But if we are wrong and he does start both, you've got a pe the probable penalty taker for a team playing against two of the worst defences in the league. And McBurney could be a really shrewd pick on free hit. Don't mind it at all. Hey, Ross, I think it's crazy to get Bruno in the starting 11. Oh, do I think it's crazy to get Bruno in the starting 11 instead of a double gaming player? I don't think it's crazy. Not at all. I don't think it's crazy ever selecting a single gaming player over a doubler. I would just always explain that my philosophy for this game is in a double, when I've got two chances for players, you back the players that have two chances. And even if the fixtures aren't there, I'll give you the example, right? Against Chelsea and Liverpool, Garnacho got, what, like 14 and then four points. Would you have expected Garnacho to get 18 points in those two games? No. Would you have expected him to get 14 against Chelsea? No. But you give players an extra chance again against any top competition, they have the extra chance for points. So if you look at algorithms, and I'm not saying you should trust AI or algorithms, no algorithm in their right mind is telling you to pick singlers over doublers. The only one that does get close is Bruno. So I think if you are to select a singler, it's only Bruno. But he's still, I think, something like 10th or 9th for midfielders for projected points. So I still don't think, on paper, it makes too much sense to go for a singler over a doubler. Nahar says, I activated bench boost whilst having Harlem Poro, Nuri, Ariola. Should I do a minus 12 or a minus 16? My rank 400k. Lastly, should I have 15 out of 15 playing doublers? Um, why did you... <laughs> I feel bad asking this question, but why would you activate the bench boost when your bench does like that? Because now, now, as you say, you're having to take a minus 12 or a minus 16 to bench boost. Your bench is probably only going to score about 16. So you're literally taking a minus 16 to gain 16 points. You're, you're going to gain a net maybe of like 5, 10. Can you cancel the bench boost once you back? I think you can. I would just, oh, you can. yeah, I'll just cancel the bench boost. Right. I'm almost certain that you can cancel the bench boost after you press it. I just wouldn't play the bench boost. I'd, I'd wait for 37. I thought there was some idea back. 
Yeah, no, I think uh, uh, my advice would be that otherwise, yeah, you're, you're probably looking at having to take a reasonable hit because I don't really like that that bench because you've got one player that's not playing, one player that's injured, one player that's flagged. Yeah, you can reverse the bench boost. Yeah, so I would just I would just cancel the bench boost in that case. Yeah, I think so. Triple captain and bench boost you can cancel. Free hit and wild card. Once you've hit it, you can't change it. By the way, I saw some person ask on Twitter again today. We say this every time, and I know if you're new, then you wouldn't know this. If you've taken a massive hit and forgot to hit the free hit button, simply just make one more transfer, activate the free hit, and all of those transfers from that week become part of the free hit. So you, as long as you activate the free hit or the wild card, whatever you were meant to play within the week before the deadline, then it doesn't matter, right? You, you, won't, you won't take a massive hit. Um, so if anyone's in that position and they're worrying like, oh no, I'm going to have lost 40 points, you don't. It, the, the free hit absorbs all of the transfers you've made. Uh, Glory, Glory Man United, love the name. Chasing Raya uh, and Elise Eze, Brereton, Saka, Salah, Henderson. Okay, well, well, what is happening with this message? Oh, okay. Raya and one of those options or Henderson and one of those options or Pickford and one of those options. Um, if you're chasing, Raya is not a very chasing pick, is it? I say that with Raya. I'm going to get rid of Raya. I think he's so boring. Henderson. I, I, I like Henderson and Havertz or Henderson and Brereton. Oh, are you saying those entire options? I'm not going to lie, Glory Glory Man United. As much as I love your name, your message doesn't doesn't make too much sense for me. Oh, my camera's gone. Okay, I now understand your question. I like the the Henderson Havertz as a Brereton Saka Salah, mainly because that's what I've been on for most of the week. Sorry for taking so long to answer your message. I think I now understand it. Um, Havertz or as a captain, I prefer as a I prefer as a captain to Havertz. Not sure whether to play it safe with Van Dijk or go for Robertson. Feel like Trent is too risky. Chasing on wildcard thirty five. Again, this is what I've done, so it's what I'm going to suggest. I like Robertson because I think he's a nice in-between. He's got upside. He's not completely nailed, but I think his minutes are slightly more secure. But if Robertson ends up missing one as well, you're going to be like, why on earth did I not go for Trent? <laughs> you know, because if you, you're going to miss a game anyway, then Trent's much better than Robbo. Huge. Hey, Ross, I'm a huge fan of your book. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. You inspired me to do my own FPL survey on biases for my dissertation. Could you fill it out and maybe share it? If you email it to me, I'll fill it out. And yeah, I can copy it in on the next live stream. I'm not going to do it on this one unless it's due like next week. But yeah, if you email it to me, I'll fill it out and I'll maybe share it around a little bit for you. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, well, well done on doing that. That's pretty cool. Um, right, it's my camera back. Sorry. Yeah, very nice. Umar. Yeah, send it over to me. Email it. My email is fplraptor at gmail.com. And I, I would love to fill that out and have a, have a read through. Cam816 is free hit. Why Elise Darwin or Trent Havertz Mateta? Why Elise Darwin, Trent Havertz Mateta? Oof. Uh, do you know what? I'm going to go based on gut feeling for these because data is kind of irrelevant in a single week, like I say. So my gut feeling when I looked at that is I like Trent Havertz Mateta. That was my gut feeling when I read it. So I'm going to go for that one. All of these combinations are so close. I'm not saying just tune off and don't listen to me right now, but who knows, right? You're giving me two really good combos there. We both have upside, both have some differentials. You really, I think this week, if you can, should trust your gut feeling. Snow Bombs says, no free hit, wildcard 35. Thank you for letting me know that. That makes it easier. Already have three Arsenal and three Liverpool. Okay, your team is... Okay, would you do Alisson Eze Mateta for a minus four or Henderson Diaz Eze Mateta for a minus eight or Henderson Trent Havertz Eze Mateta for a minus 12? No, nah, I'll do the minus four. Alisson Eze Mateta. Your team's already looking really, really fine with the players that you've got. The key thing is you just want to get Kelleher out. So I think Alisson Eze Mateta is absolutely perfect. No issues at all with that for me. That's where I'd go, snow bombs. Dan D says, hey, Ross, currently two points behind my mini league leader who is not on free hit and has Darwin. Should I go for Darwin to be safe or gamble with Robo or Diaz? I would say that your last real opportunity here to overtake him, as well as just normal weeks, is your free hit. So I would just go for the players that you think will score the most points. So the way that I'll flip this question back onto you is if your mini league leader did not have Darwin, would you pick him? And if the answer is no, then don't pick Darwin. I don't think when you're two points behind anyone, you should be playing safe. 
if you were 30 points ahead, I'd say maybe block him with picking Darwin. But I, I would just go for the player that you think will score the most points from Liverpool there. Johnny says chasing. I love that pretty much every super chat at the moment is I'm chasing. I love it. Triple captain and free hit left. Nice. Very good. Triple captain Salah this week, free hit 37. Feels the best triple captain option left. I think this is simple. I think if you've got, if your team doesn't need a free hit this week, then yeah, absolutely free hit 37. If, I don't know. I do quite like Cole Palmer, triple captain in 35. I just think Cole Palmer's a monster. I think triple captain Salah this week or Cole Palmer in 35 are good. And yeah, I like free hit 37. But again, maybe your team's well start for 37. Then free hit in 38 could be really nice. Because you can go for like triple Liverpool. You can go for triple Arsenal. You can go for triple City. Let's say they are still fighting for the league. Let's say that they're not fighting for the league. But I don't know, Manchester United and Newcastle are fighting on the final day. Then you can like, do you know what I mean? Like you can really decide which teams have stuff to play for and which teams are going to go full strength. Because let's say going into game week 38, the league is wrapped up and everyone else has like triple City and City completely rotate. It could be a disaster. So I don't even mind saving the free hit for 38. Um, lost where I was. Lucas, Pickford, Saar or Neto? Uh, Pickford, then Neto, then Saar for me. Wildcard 35, would you risk Rice to Eze Elise for a minus four? I don't like Rice as an FPL option. However, he does take set pieces and you never know in a single game week, but I still think Rice to Eze probably should gain you four points on paper. So yes, just about, but I don't think that's an easy one. You could just quite easily keep um, Declan Rice. Dan says, Bruno, my free hit is my fifth mid. Fine. Yeah, good form fixtures pens. Have Saka, Havertz, Salah, Eze as the other four. Can you see him outscoring the likes of Brerot and Diaz or Elise? Can I see that happening? 100%. Do I think on paper it's the right move? No. There's, they're two different things, right? If I was to bet, I would bet that two very good options with two fixtures and two good fixtures would outscore the player with one fixture. But the great thing about Bruno is he's nailed on pens and he has the better fixture out of all of them, right? So, yes, I can absolutely see it. And if you want to go, I'm not going to talk anyone out of it, but I will again explain that if a player has two options, I, I tend to prefer, or two fixtures, I tend to prefer them. So I would I would say in order of preference for me, it's Brerot and Diaz, Elise, then Fernandes. I really want to get Elise in. I'm wondering if I just do have a, I'll, I'll show you in a second. Let me answer a few more questions. You missed my super chat, Sonic's Nemesis. Wait, what? Oh, you're calling me Sonic's Nemesis. I was looking for your name at Sonic Snowsis. Um, what's his name? Is it Eggman? Dr. Dr. Eggman. Dr. Eggman. You should call me Dr. Eggman, I think. Oh, I found it. Thank you. Yeah, I did miss it. Don't know why. I didn't see that before. Sorry, I've got you now, um, Dash Mate. Hello, exactly on time. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay, you give me your team. Two free transfers, 0 0.6 in the bank. Bradley and Foden to Jota and Mikalenko. That's so spicy. I don't know why. I just think that's such a spicy combo of transfers. Or is a hit worth it? Who to bench? Firstly, love those transfers. Who to bench? Um, I think the thing is, though, you would probably bench Canate out of your defenders and out of your attackers... Yeah, Foden and Palmer. But if you're selling Foden, yeah, if you're selling Foden, you've then got to bench a doubler, right? Is that the way I'm reading this? Maybe Haaland. If you want to make those moves, you have to bench Haaland and Canate, I think, dash, mate. I don't mind it, though, because I do like the idea of chasing the upside with Jota. It depends at what point you are in your season, I suppose. Um, Derglamax, just high Ross, good luck. Derglamax, <laughs> you are far too generous. Another red super chat. Um, I love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting me. Um, I basically feel like you're my sugar daddy at this point, but thank you. I appreciate it. And good luck to you as well. I don't think you've ever said anything other than positive things in, in the chat. I love positive people, just nice, kind, positive people. There aren't enough of them in the world, and I think you are one of them, so thank you. Sorry, back to the questions. Hey, Ross, on Wildcard 35, would you start Kirkes or 8 Nuri? Kirkes. And who would you transfer Kunya out for a minus four? Uh, Mateta, probably. 10 million in the bank and Haaland starting. Branthwaite and Palmer on the bench. Uh, yeah, I'd start Kirkes over 8 Nuri and Kunya to Mateta. If you, if you don't own Solanke, of course, is the only one that I'd be really wanting to do there. Good to go from Sarabia to Eze and keep Foden. Um, Sarabia to Eze and keep Foden. I don't know if I'd sell Sarabia for Eze. I think if I had Sarabia, I'd keep Sarabia. I'd rather go Foden to Eze, in all honesty. I don't, yeah, I wouldn't sell Sarabia. He's probably almost definitely going to be on pens now. 
Zero chips. Kelleher to Pickford, minus four. Um, yeah, just about, just about. Already have made my two transfers. Would you bench boost? So your bench would probably be Palmer, Haaland, and Senesi, and who's your other goalkeeper? You haven't listed your other goalkeeper. Oh, Neto. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a bench boost, Ben. Absolutely, Ben. Oh, yeah, so your bench is Neto, Mikalenko, Palmer, Haaland. Yeah, I like that. That's a bench boost, for sure. 14 doublers. Do I bench boost Henderson, Haaland, Eight Nuri, Richards? That's less of a bench boost because Eight Nuri is a doubt and so is Richards. I'd be less inclined there, FPL Doctor, just slightly. Van Dyke or Robertson? I prefer Robertson just about. Pickford, Sara, Neto. I answered that one. Uh, Pickford. Andre with a super chat but didn't say anything. Thank you very much. Cool. Dergler, Max and Shazam are the two absolute legends of the world. Um, right, 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 right. I've answered lots of questions. Can I just can I just be selfish for a second and talk about my team? So here's the team. Let me just actually show you. So this is the team, right? I don't know what I'm doing. The first thing is, do I just do Havertz to Elise, go for the triple Crystal Palace attack, and then go for... Let me show you. I don't like the neck on this top. Why is it that saggy? It's, got, it's because it's had to stretch over my big head to get onto my body. Why are you laughing? What you laughing for? I'm serious. If you wonder why I said laughing, she's from Birmingham. Old pickle. So um, she says laughing, even though it's laughing, not laughing. Sorry, anyway, I'm getting distracted, chat. Munoz to, let's say, Saliba. No, I'd, mm, I'd probably... Mm, why? <laughs> I still don't know what Arsenal defenders I like and want to go for. Okay. And then Havertz to Olise. Olise. What do we think about that? What do you prefer, Munoz and Havertz or White and Elise? Okay. So, left or right? Pickle is right. Laughing. It's not laughing. What you laughing for? See, it is. Left or right? Munoz and Havertz. White and Elise. White and Elise. What, so, I'm going double Arsenal and double Liverpool defence. Uh, okay, right. I'm going to run a poll because you're all saying different things. I was, I was hoping it would be a, a large consensus. Let me run the poll. Yeah. Okay, which combo do you pr prefer? Um, Minyos and Havertz, White and Elise. Is Eze out? No, not as far as I know, unless I've missed something. I'd love that. Any chaos that we can get from free hit. Afternoon all. Good afternoon, Frosty. How late are you today? Oh, just under an hour. Good job, Frosty. Disgraceful. You'd think I'm not even paying him for his job or something. Oh, wait, I'm not. <laughs> hey. I remember when there was like a moderator's union when you wanted to start getting paid for your work. It's outrageous. It's probably led by you, wasn't it? Yeah, I was getting paid. Yeah, I'm not paying the mods. It's disgraceful. Yeah. Okay, so this is one option. Mignors and Havertz to White and Elise. Option. Or I still have white and I just switch back to my original plan. Or, sorry. <laughs> or, <laughs> I still go Gabriel because he's just elite, right? With white. And I actually switch Raya to Allison. Something like that. I'm tinkering so much. I'm so aware that I'm really overthinking this, by the way. Wait, what am I doing? Oh, he's not Alice. He's Becker, isn't he? Why did they decide with every Liverpool player to go from Allison to Becker, from Jota to Diogo, from Van Dyke to Virgil? Why? It's unnecessary. And then I can't find the players. Okay, what about this huge combination? <laughs> Raya Van Dyke, Munoz, Havertz, or Allison Becker, Gabriel White, Elise? Uh. <laughs> That's the name on their shirt, is it? 
What big big Verge has put Virgil on his back, has he? Yeah, I think so. That must be a recent thing, though. That's where he used to have Van Dyke. Left, right, left, left, right, right all day, left all right. Okay, so no one knows, basically. This is it. Like, I can tell by the poll immediately. These are such 50-50 decisions. Okay, let me look. Let me chat. Let me look at this in isolation. Raya versus Alison. Alison's better. Virgil versus Gabrielle. Gabrielle's better. Munoz versus... <laughs> Why it's better. Havertz versus Elise. Havertz is better. So it's basically, I'm kind of sacrificing three positions for the sake of Havertz. So if I like, if I confirm those transfers, let me just, because this is free here, so I can tinker as much as I want. Um, sorry, chat. I know this is a bit messy, but, you know, my mind is messy. I just don't like that Crystal Palace triple up on the attack. I'm not going to lie. It looks disgraceful. They are one of the worst. Although under Glasnar, I need to stop thinking this because I think the things that put me off is like um, Palace are one of the worst attacks in the league this season, but that was largely under Hodgson. What do we think about that as a team? I'm going to sit with that for a second. About which teams concede from set pieces? Yeah. I don't know that I've got... I can see like... I can't see XG conceded from set pieces, but I can see attempts conceded from set pieces. Or maybe goals. Players on the left are more nailed. Yeah, maybe. I quite like this. Your rank is poop. Triple. Frosty? Your rank is poop. Triple Palace could be what catapults you back to 200k. That's rude. That is my team besides Trent for Robbo, lol. There we go. We're on the right lines, Harris. Too much reliance on Arsenal and Liverpool defence and Palace attack. Yeah, but if I then switch it, I've still got two Palace attackers. I've still got two... I mean... Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Your team looks better now. Does it? What do you think? No. You're back in double de defences at a double attack. I know this is kind of the thing that I've been going against all... All, um, all morning. Not all morning, all week, I should say. Glasner isn't the Messiah. I didn't say he's the Messiah. Just think he's much better than Hodgson for attacking football, isn't he? What do you think about Semenyo? Would he play both? Uh, probably. He'll at least get minutes in both, you'd imagine. Um, Will of its own says, heart, egg, pickle, heart. <laughs> we love you too, Will. Thank you. Um, Greek says, hi, dude. Taking out Son for Eze and have 8.4 million in the bank available for another midfielder. Thinking of getting Bruno in, who would you get in? Thank you. Taking up some for Eze and have 8.4 available for another midfielder. Um, yeah, you could go for Bruno, Luis Diaz, uh, Havertz. I think all of those are fine options. If you've already tripled up on Liverpool and Arsenal, then yeah, maybe it is. Uh, I still think Elise and Brereton Diaz are fine as well. But yeah, especially if you've got no wildcard, by the way, Bruno's almost definitely the one you go for there. Thanks for another stream and answering my questions. Appreciate you. Good luck for the game week. Thank you very much, FPL Machine. Good luck to you as well. Elise versus McBurney on free hit. I prefer Elise, but McBurney could be a really nice pick. Dashmate says, biting my nails, Jota or Salah triple captain. Oh, Jota triple captain is the spiciest thing I've ever heard. That's like Carolina Reaper levels of spice. I, I prefer Salah, obviously, though, because I'm boring. Start Neto or Pickford? Oh, I'd go Pickford just about. Captain Havertz or Salah? I'd go Salah. But again, it's because I'm a bit boring. Khan says, instead of 3-5-2, should I go for 3-4-3? Three, three? Depends. My six of Paul and Arsenal, Robertson, Salah, Darwin, Gabriel, Saka, Havertz. Rest is mostly similar with Mateta, Solanke, Eze. Alternative is remove Darwin and get Elise or someone else. So it's Darwin versus Elise. Oh, probably in isolation. Probably just about Elise. Especially as it then gives you another spot to have another Liverpool a defender or attacker. I'd probably say just about, yeah. I think I prefer a 3-5-2. And in general, midfielders tend to score more points. If you look at, apart from Ollie Watkins, who's a monster, if you look in general, there tends to be more points for midfielders because they get the extra point for the clean sheet, extra point for the goal. They can rack up a big score a lot easier. Um... MN Chuckster says, Hi, wildcard 35. Nice. Risking minus eight this week before a wildcard. Struggling with the last decision. Would you go 3-5-2 with Eze Elise? 
or three four three with Eze Mateta? Feel like Elise could go big, but don't know. Again, in isolation, I prefer Elise to Mateta. But for me, my issue is I need two forwards. But in your spot, when it's basically like a straight shootout, Eze, uh, sorry, Elise or Mateta, I prefer Elise. I think he's got a higher upside again, higher ceiling. Living in Charleston, SC Del Schaefer. That's a long name, but thank you very much for becoming a Rap Tier 1 2 member. I do appreciate you. Thank you. Craig Hunt says, really can't decide if to triple captain Salah. What do you think? Yeah, I'd probably go for it. But like I said, if you don't fancy Salah at the moment, let's say you don't think he's performing particularly well, then I think Palmer in 35 is absolutely fine. I don't think I like this exact combination that I've gone for here. There are a few things I don't like. I want Verge, which means taking out Gabriel, I think, sadly. I've just got a, I just want to tap into Virgil's wonderful bullet headers in double game weeks. And I therefore I can't have Allison. So let me put Hendo back in. I think this is the combination I'm most likely to go for. And then in this spot here is Havertz or Erdegaard. I think this is the combo that just that I've been on all week and that I would be more annoyed if I didn't go for this and it went ballistic. So Havertz or Erdegaard. Do you know what? I'm going to run a poll on that. I'd love to know. Do you know what? Actually, scrap all of this. It's time for the wheel. We spin the wheel. Okay. Havertz. I'll also run a poll as well. Erdegaard. By the way, if you are one of the 5,500 people watching right now, firstly, I appreciate you and I love you very much. and I'm proud of you for everything. Secondly, please do consider subscribing and liking. Have we hit 116,000 yet? Do I have to keep begging? Okay, we hit that ages ago. Do you know what? Please subscribe. But if you don't want to, don't worry. Let me run a poll quick and then I'll, I'll spin the wheel. Let me end this poll because you can't run two polls at once. Um, hello? Start a poll. Um, who do you prefer? Havertz? Erdegaard? I think this one is close. It really does come down to your expectations of Havertz's minutes, but I'm not an Arsenal fan, so... Havertz plays number nine for Arsenal. Why would you not want that? Well, this is exactly it. But the issue that we have is that he might not start both in the double. And if he doesn't, then Erdegaard is inherently a better option. You want the player that plays for both. Because if I said to you, you get Erdegaard for 180 minutes or you get Havertz for 110, and then I ran the poll, no one in their right mind votes for uh, Havertz there. So you need Havertz to start both games, really. I suppose you don't. I suppose he could do better in 110. But then at that point, you might as well go for someone like Bruno, right? If you're going to get 90 from Bruno. I don't know why I've got my fingers crossed. Like, I really want one in particular. This does tell me who I want, though. This is what the wheel was useful for, right? Because you spin the wheel. We, we do best of three on this channel, by the way, if you're new and you've not seen this, the wheel spin. So, best of three. So, first to two. Ah, chat. That's not what we want to see. <laughs> so Erdegaard wins 2-0. So the will, the will likes Erdegaard. That was a bit boring, really. Screw the will. Oh, no, I'm going to regret saying that. I don't mean it, Will Hill. I've just ended up back where I was all along, which is here. I feel like this is this is what my what my brain wants. This is so difficult, isn't it? Like, I really thought free hit would be a lot easier than this because I was like, yeah, triple Arsenal, triple Liverpool, have a few Palace, done. But because each team has so many good options, can't decide whether to triple Captain Salah, what do you think? I, I would probably do it if I still had the chip and I was playing nothing else this week, yeah. I'd probably go for triple Captain Salah. But you do have some good other options. Like, even if you don't play it in 37, like I said, go Palmer 35. Why not Captain Saka? Is he not 100%? I just think him and Salah will get a similar number of minutes and I would always back Salah, especially when I don't think the fixtures are any better for Saka. In fact, I'd say they're fairly similar. Maybe Saka's are slightly better from an attacking perspective, which is why I've gone for double Arsenal attack, especially with Wolves being decimated. But... Yeah. Oh, just is White going to get benched against Wolves? My my reasoning for maybe White not being benched here is Tommy Asu's just played against Bayern, didn't he? If Tommy Asu didn't start that game, I'd be worried that Tommy Asu comes in here, but he did. So is Tommy Asu now going to start two in a row? Maybe. Oh, maybe. Oh, I don't know. That Arsenal spot is killing me. 
This is why I went for Raya and Munoz for a little bit, because I'm like, at least I know Raya starts. Ross, would you prefer Pickford or Gerbich? Uh, Pickford. Hi, Egg. Mateta, and he'll make a lot of saves, though. Hi, hi Egg. Gerbich. Makes loads, doesn't he? Does he? I think so. Hi, Egg. Mateta and Diaz or Donkey Darwin and Elise. Um, the way that you've said that, probably Mateta and Diaz. I, I do think I slightly prefer Mateta and Diaz. But I do feel like upside-wise, Darwin and Elise could pop off more than, than Mateta and Diaz. But I think Mateta and Diaz are slightly safer for minutes as, as a combination. Cash says, two free transfers. Eze for Bailey slash Foden. Okay, I'd, yeah, I like that. Probably Bailey, I'd rather sell than Foden. Mateta for Maniz. Uh, yeah. Can take a minus four to bring in Mitchell for Bradley. Do I bench, bench Foden, Palmer or Haaland if I bring in Eze and Mateta? I don't know about the minus four for Bradley unless you've got no other defender that you can play. As long as you've got another decent defender, I'd play the, the defender. If you don't, then yeah, the minus four is fine. Do I bench Foden or Palmer or Haaland if I bring in Eze and Mateta? I'd bench Palmer and start Foden and Haaland, I think. Just about. I just think Arsenal... Not long ago, we were literally like Arsenal are the best defence the world's ever seen. And they've conceded a few games in a row now, or two games in a row. Have they? I think Bayern made them look like a weaker defence than they are, I think is what I'm trying to say here. But before that, they, they kept clean sheets against... Oh, they, yeah, they conceded against Villa, didn't they? But they, they kept clean sheet against Brighton. They are a good defence. So I, I, I'm not backing Palmer massively, even though it is Palmer. Hi, Ross. Start Haaland or Sarabia? Um, Sarabia. Why not switch Brereton Diaz for Elise and then Henderson for Pickford? Palace defence is overrated. I don't think the Palace defence is overrated at all. I think, if anything, the Palace attacks being slightly overrated. Uh, Palace defence is pretty good. They're, they're pretty good over the last six and across the season for expected goals conceded. But yeah, I understand what you're saying. I just think I like this combo. I like Brereton Diaz. It's just, I think I've committed to having him. It's just just one different pick. Hopefully it's not the thing that decides. Hopefully Elise doesn't get like a 20 points from Brereton Diaz, get four. That would, that would, be, that would hurt. But if it happens, it happens. Listen, there are going to be so many players this week that I've considered that haul. I guarantee at least five or six of the players that I had at some point and are now not in my team, whether that be Jota, Diaz, uh, Lewis, that is, Gabriel, Raya might save a pen. Like I can imagine that there will be things that happen where I'm like, oh, I should have kept that player. But this, you just have to back what you end up on, I think, at the end of the day. Bench Palmer or Isaac? Oh, God, I'd still bench Palmer and start Isaac. Nuri or Tarkovsky? I'd start Tarkovsky. Uh, as a triple captain slash bench boost 37. Yeah, I like that plan. As a triple captain is spicy, but it could pay off for you. I do think people are overrating Eze slightly, right? I love Eze. He's my vice captain. He's great. Great, great data, great fixtures on pens, we think. Good for minutes. Take set pieces. Uh, Palace have been attacking better under Glasnar. Like, there is a lot going for him, but triple captain Eze, I'm not sure. Captaincy is already bold enough, I think. JM says, yo, yo, why are you picking uh, White to differentiate your team from those... Are you picking White to differentiate your team from those non-free hitters? Gabriel Saliva have a better chance of starting both. No, cheers, bud. Yeah, Gabriel is the best Arsenal defender to own. It's not necessarily just to differentiate myself from those that aren't free hitting. It's a bit of an ownership play. Gabriel last week was at 82 or 83% at my rank. And then lots of other people either bring him in this week or free hit with him. I think Gabriel's ownership will be about 93 to 94%. I genuinely do think it will be that high. So, I mean, I literally don't care. If Gabriel scores me four goals in this double, it, it gains me nothing. Let me tell you, if that happens and I don't own him, I'm going to sob. But it's the aggressive play to not own a player that's at 100% ownership pretty much, isn't it? So I think White, if he starts both, still covers the clean sheets. If White's benched against Wolves, then I, I screwed up. So that's what I need to decide. I could just go Saliba. But Saliba's so boring. But he's good for bonus. Yeah. Yeah, I've gone back to white. I didn't know you were on white to begin with. Yeah, I was on white for the last like three or four days. And then I went to Saliba, then I went to Mignor, so I've gone back and forth on it all. Can you hear that music chat? It's gonna demonetize me. Yeah, it was really loud. It's that guy that got there's a guy that drives by on a bike with a big speaker on the back of his bicycle. If you're around Nottingham, 
and you live near the city centre, you will know the guy that drives around with a speaker on his bike. He's a legend. But it's a bit loud for now, to be honest. Um, Glory Glory Man United says, Thoughts on a 4-5-1? Henderson, Van Dijk, Gabriel, Trent, Sanessi. Kai, Saka, Salah, Elise. I mean, you're literally picking Sanessi over Brereton, Diaz, or Mateta, or something like that, you know? I, I, don't, I, I think I prefer, like, most of the forwards to Sanessi. I get what you're doing here, but I don't think Sanessi is a better pick than Mateta, or Solanke, or whoever you would be missing out on in the attack. Or even a Darwin, for example. I think I prefer all of those to Sanessi. I'm not saying Sanessi's bad. Like, he's on my free hit. He's on, on my bench, but not over at the attackers. Diaz captain over Salah, given Salah's form. No, not for me. Do you think that Jesus is worth a punt? No. <laughs> Alisson and Munoz versus Neto and Robertson. Alisson and Munoz versus Neto and Robertson. Um, oof. Neto and Robertson. Neto and Robertson. Pickford and Elise or Henderson and Brereton Diaz? I mean, I've got Henderson and Brereton Diaz, so I'm going to go there. Obviously, otherwise I would just go for Pickford and Elise if I thought that was better. Again, if you're asking about players that I own, just look at what I own and that's what I prefer. Haaland to Mateta, minus four. I don't think I'd do it for a minus four. I would be tempted for three, not for a minus four. Start one and bench two, Palmer, Gordon, Zabani. I would just about start Palmer. If we wanted Cunha, then why not Sarabia now? Because without, without Cunha, Sarabia is feeding no one. He's on penalties, probably almost definitely, but he's got less support around him to score the goals. I also didn't want Cunha, by the way. Cunha wasn't in my starting 11. Cunha was on my bench. So if you want to put Sarabia on your bench, then yeah, that's good. Or if you want to start with him, go for it. But I was never picking Cunha anyway. I've been on Mateta all week. Hear me out. Pickford, Trent, Munoz, Robertson, Havert, Saka, Erdegaard. Yeah, love that selection of players. I did consider briefly just dropping all Arsenal defenders, but that seems completely unwise. It's one thing saying I want to back double attack over double defence, but just completely bidding off Arsenal defence? I mean, it could go well. If they concede in both games, you are laughing because everyone else has double. But it feels like you're you're really picking a bad team and just hoping you get super lucky at that stage. If you feel Elisa has a higher ceiling than Mateta, why not make that swap and think of a different forward? Because I think I prefer Brereton, Brereton Diaz and Mateta to Elise and McBurney. Oh, do I? That's a, that's a close one. It is a close one. I just think minutes-wise, minutes-wise, Brereton Diaz and Mateta is so much better than Elise and McBurney on paper. It might not play out that way, but both Brereton Diaz and Mateta look very nailed at the moment, whereas Elise and McBurney could easily only start one each. It's just not quite worth the risk. I'd have to really prefer that combo. Dubravka or Martinez putting my house on one? Uh, Emmy. Mm. Yeah, I think you've got a back Emmy there. Oh, I think. Oh, I don't know. Because they, they are going to be absolutely shattered, those Villa players. Yeah, I'd still go Emmy Martinez. How are you, bro? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for asking. How are you? Mateta or Solanke? Solanke. Also have six doubts or injured players. Do you think Wildcard 35 is better than Wildcard 34? Thank you, Egg. I really don't like Wildcard 34. If you've activated it already, then go with it. But the team that you want from 35 onwards, I would say like 12, maybe 13, maybe genuinely 15 of them would differ from your team now. If I was wildcarding this week, in 35, sorry, I don't think I'd have any of these 15 players. Maybe I'd have an Arsenal defender. Maybe Salah, but un unlikely. So, no, I wouldn't wildcard this week. I'd, I'd prefer to sacrifice this week slightly and wildcard next week. How long do we have until the deadline? Oh, God, we have not got long. About 40 minutes till the deadline. Dear Lord. That is not what we want to see. Why you take Robertson but not Trent? Uh, I just think he's slightly safer for minutes. Maybe. I could be completely wrong. I could be completely wrong. And if I am, then I'll... If, if Trent starts both games, then I did massively screw up there because that was a real higher... Like, Trent could outscore my entire defense by himself. But I just... I'm a bit worried that he doesn't start both. Neil from Scout predicts Erdegaard to start ahead of Havertz. This is... Okay, so if you want to know where I'm currently debating... It's my final two Arsenal spots. 
Do I go White, Saliba, or Gabriel? And do I go Havertz or Odegaard? That's it. I think I'm going to leave the rest of the team because I don't want to keep making changes right up to... Because I'll just regret making a last-minute change. So I think, I think the team is locked apart from White and Havertz. On paper, I think objectively, no bias is involved. If I was just building the best team, it'd be Gabriel and Havertz. But I'm tempted to go against Gabriel, and I'm also worried about Havertz's minutes. So I could end up on something like Saliba and... I would say the most safe Arsenal three is Saka, Saliba, Erdegaard. But it's also the, the lower upside pair. White and Havertz have a lot higher upside. They probably won't outscore them now than, than Erdegaard and Saliba on paper. Havertz will play left centre mid. He's still good there, by the way. And do bear in mind that Erdegaard plays right centre mid. So it doesn't mean that Erdegaard's any more attacking. Also, if whoever plays striker comes off, it could be that Havertz is then pushed to the number nine at that point. What about Jota over Diaz? Risky, but got a good gut feeling. Liverpool fan. Yeah, go for it. I really don't mind Jota over Diaz. I, I think they probably play a similar-ish amount of minutes. Maximum Diaz is going to get is probably like 30, 40 more minutes more than, than Jota. Is Erdegaard fully fit? He looks knackered. This was my other concern. Erdegaard was carrying a knock last week. He looks tired himself. Who's to say Erdegaard doesn't get rest? I mean, it is less likely than, than Havertz, of course, but you never know. You never know. Do you remember the week that Haaland was benched and everyone was like, went mental because we never thought that would happen? I do agree, though, that Arsenal, like, with no competitions left to compete in other than the Prem, Havertz is a monster. I'm sorry, Erdegaard is. But if you look at Havertz's minutes, right, you might view this, by the way, as reason to suggest that he will get benched. He's an absolute fitness monster. So since game week 23, 1990, 83, 75, 90, 90, 90, 65, 88, 90. I mean, the, the lowest minutes Havertz has played is against Luton in game week 31. Still got 65. And he was only subbed off because they were like one or two and it was up. I mean, he's just a, 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 a machine. Even against Sheffield United in 27, when they were, they were like 5 nil up, loads of people started to get early subs. Havertz still played 90. Against Burnley and West Ham when they were 5-0 and 6-0 up, he's still on the pitch. You know what I mean? He doesn't seem... It might just genuinely be... Because you have to remember, right? And this is something that I think we forget. We are not physiotherapists, most of us. And even if we are, we don't have access to the data that they have. I think people assume... And I used to think this, by the way, before I understood more about the way that clubs run. I used to think that the manager just was like, Oi... Oi, Havertz, are you feeling tired? And Havertz is like, yeah, bruv, I kind of need a break. All right, Havertz, you can have a... It's not like that, right? They have so many metrics that they measure the players on. Havertz might just genuinely not need a break at any point. Some players, like Bruno Fernandes, will just never get a rest because he doesn't need it and he's very important. So just because Havertz has played so many minutes, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I also just think his data's outrageous. He's hit over 1xG on multiple occasions this season. 1xGI, I should say, on multiple occasions this season which is madness. I want Havertz, I think. Okay, I want Havertz. I've talked myself into that. So it's basically White, Saliba, Gabriel. <laughs> yeah, bruv, I need a break. Havertz to Arteta. <laughs> this is, that's how they say it. Oh, bruv, need a break. Okay, okay. Final, disc final poll then, and I'll get back to answer some of your questions. Final poll. Start a poll. If only one Arsenal defender... And chasing slightly, who do you pr prefer? Right, I'm running a poll for who you would pick in my position. I think, um, yeah, I'm not going to put Raya there because I think I do, I do like Henderson. I think I'm going to go for Henderson. Okay, so White, Saliba, Gabriel. I'd love to know who you pick. I think most people are going to say Gabriel, and probably rightly so, because he's obviously the most highly owned as well. I'm so intrigued to see. I actually don't know the way that this poll is going to go, but I mean, I'm excited to see it. I, I think I'm getting closer and closer to locking in, by the way. Frosty with a big boy super chat. I love you, Frosty. I'm stuck. Okay. Gordon to Eze slash Elise is locked in. Very nice. Yeah, because you're wildcard 35. I was about to say I don't like it. Yeah, you're wildcard 35. Unsure whether to take a minus four, minus eight to replace Foden and or eight Nuri. Minus four for eight Nuri to someone like Munoz. Seems like it might pay off. We'll only have two Liverpool if I keep Foden. 
Yeah, I, I mean, like I said, I don't know that the, the likes of Luis Diaz or Jota get significantly more minutes than Foden. The concern is if Foden plays a hundred and sorry, like ninety minutes this weekend, is he then starting against Brighton? Maybe less likely to. This is true. Yeah, Liverpool just aren't attacking fairly well. I think, Frosty, I slightly actually prefer Eight Nuri to Munoz than I do Foden to Luis Diaz or Jota. But I don't know why Foden to Jota just feels like a very frosty move. Knowing you as a person, knowing the moves you've made in the past, I can just imagine you messaging me, did Foden to Jota? So I don't know if that's something you should take into account, but yeah. Okay, 49% of you think Wyatt, 38% think Gabriel, 13% think Saliba. Saliba would just be for the safety of minutes, really, wouldn't it? Do you think Ariola starts? I've honestly got no idea. I'm really sorry. No idea. If he's fit, I think he will. Eggman me hermano. Trust me, you need McAllister. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm not going to go McAllister. Thank you for the super chat. I, th I, I do think McAllister is safe for minutes, but if Endo doesn't play at any point, which is a good chance, then McAllister plays as the CDM. He's like the six whatever you want to call it, 6 CDM. Chat, how do you refer to positions? Do you refer to positions by numbers or do you prefer to positions by the words? I think it's a bit of a generational thing. Like, let's say you've got someone that's sitting at the base of a midfield, the endo position. Would you call them a six or would you call them a defensive midfielder or a CDM? Like, what, what would you... CDM, defensive midfielder, six, what would you call them? Words, 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 words. Okay, most people words, okay. Interesting. Not directly relevant to FPL there, but I sort of go back and forth. I said defensive midfielder there, but I'd normally say six, I think. FIFA generation. Yeah, FIFA generation for sure. Yeah, exactly. I would I would say like, I would like to say like CAM and that's definitely from FIFA that I got that terminology. Yeah, I think you're like me, chat. You sort of bounce between the two by the looks of it. You've got just over half an hour until the deadline, by the way. So do think about locking your, your teams in as well. I think I'm relatively settled for now. I'm, that, this isn't to say that I won't make last-minute changes. I've made changes all week. But I think for the time being, I'm relatively settled. The reason that I'm relatively settled is, is actually because this is kind of what I've been on for the last couple of days, with a few variations, of course. But I just think it's got a nice combination of I've got the key players. I've covered most things off. I would say the only thing missing from this team is there's no Gabriel. And if he scores, that's that kills my rank. And I've got no Liverpool attack. I can't see anywhere else that this team is massively lacking. Where else do you think this team's lacking, chat? It is literally just Gabriel, double Arsenal defence, and then I don't have a Liverpool attacker outside of Salah. So I think other than that, it's in a good position. I saw news about White playing through injury. Is it real? Oh, is it? Where did you see that? That would put me off. If, it, if that is real, well, then that would put me off. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, Elise. Yeah, I'm missing Elise. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Please, why Liverpool defence? You're going to... Oh, my God, why why Liverpool defence? <laughs> Sorry. I just read, like, four messages in a row, which is just people complaining about double Liverpool defence. I just find it funny, right? Everyone would really happily select one Liverpool defender, but as soon as you select a second, everyone goes mental. It's just one more. <laughs> the reason for it is I just want to differentiate slightly. Everyone's going to be on double Arsenal defence, double Liverpool attack. I could just do that and it probably would pay off, but I don't like doing boring stuff that everyone else does. So, Bit of fun, isn't it? Bit of fun. Are you worried about Robertson's form? I think Robertson has been outstanding since coming back from injury. So no, not at all. I am free hit 34, but I still have my wild card. When would you do? When would you suggest I play my wild card? 35 or 36? I still have my bench boost. Uh, wild card 35, bench boost 37. Definitely. Yeah, wild card. The reason I have wild card 35 rather than 36 is you're going to want triple R, uh, sorry, triple Spurs and triple Chelsea because they've got two doubles. So you might as well load up on them in 35. Yeah, I would, I would go wild card 35. Why Brereton and not Elise? Just a preference thing. Not even a preference thing. I love Elise. Elise is great. I just like Brereton Diaz as well. I have four injuries and one transfer, so need to wildcard. Okay. 
have you done a wildcard team for uh, wildcard 34? No free hits used later this season. No, because the issue is you've got Alex. Unless you've already activated the wildcard, I still wouldn't do it. Because the team you want in 34 is not at all the team you want from 35 onwards. Right? Because from 35 onwards, you want Man City, you want Spurs who blank, you want Chelsea who play Arsenal. Man United and Newcastle, you can have a few from, but the, oh, the camera's coming in. The team you want now isn't the team you'd want from 35 onwards. So I don't think, I think this is one of the worst weeks to wildcard. Honestly. And I know that's harsh for people that have wildcarded, but I just don't like it. Um, Scott says, Kilman, Foden, Gordon. Sorry, let me actually say. So if you are to wildcard, let's say you've already used it, I would make sure that you've got Son on your bench, Palmer on your bench, and maybe one of Gusto and Porro on your bench. And I would also make sure that in your starting 11, you've got probably Gordon, Isaac, Fernandez, and like Dallow or something like that. I think you have to accept that if you're wildcarding this week, you're not going to have a full team of doublers because you also need to set up your, your team well moving forward, you know? So I think you need to find that balance. Uh, Julio says, Hey Ross, Mene Munoz and Havertz or White and Elise? Is my camera back? Yes. Um... Mignoz and Havertz or White and Elise. Also Pickford or Neto. I would prefer Mignoz and Havertz slightly, but it's close. Pickford or Neto prefer Pickford. Also, is it always better to go with all double gaming players and a free hit? I don't think it's better, but I think on paper you are increasing your chance of returns, obviously, if you pick 22 fixtures. Could we get an Arsenal leak? There's a very small possibility, but I don't expect it, though. Kilman, Foden, Gordon to Robertson, Elise, Eze for a minus four. If you are on wildcard 35, yes. If you're not on wildcard 35, then no. Because you're, you're selling Foden and Gordon, you would definitely want Foden and Gordon in 35. So I feel like you're making transfers there that you'd want to reverse immediately. I would just keep Foden and Gordon. Also, I don't think you need to sell Kilman. Kilman's fine. He doubles this week. I'm not a massive fan of that, Scott, unless you're wildcard 35. And if you are wildcard 35, I like it a bit more. Keelan says, would you sell Harlem for free this week if you plan to get him back on wildcard next week? For free, Keelan? Yeah, I don't mind it. Especially if it's for someone like Solanke, maybe even Mateta. Uh, but would I do it? I think the only way I would sell Harlem for another doubling attacker is if there are no other transfers that make my team better. If you've got like a, I don't know, I don't think Zabani is that bad, by the way, but let's say you've got Zabani in defense and you think, oh, I could actually get to Van Dyke from there or something, then that's a better transfer for me than Haaland to Mateta, as an example. Taylor says, I'm an Arsenal fan. White's apparently played through most of the season, um, played through injury most of the season. There's been a few interview quotes on it. I wouldn't be put off by it. Awesome. Thank you for letting me know that. Well, not awesome that he's played through injury, but... If he's done it for the entire season, he can probably make it through to the back end of the season. Yeah, hopefully I won't be put off, but, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit worried now that people are saying that. Um, Nikhil says, my team is 100.6 million. I will wildcard and game me 35. Is it worth doing Haaland to Mateta and getting Haaland back in 35? Okay, I've just basically discussed this. Um... But it allows me to get Van Dijk and Havertz in place of Aitner and Palmer. Do you know what, Nikhil? Yes. Because it allows you to also get Van Dijk and Havertz, I, I like it a lot more. Because it's not just in isolation, then Mateta and for Haaland. It's also allowing you to make two other really good transfers. Yeah, Nikhil, I would make those three moves. Daniel Meeks says, Erdegaard scored last time Arsenal played Wolves. Scout predicts Havertz benched and Trossard playing. Should I take this into account? Oh, I don't like that people are predicting Havertz on the bench. Yeah, maybe just go for Erdegaard for safety of minutes. I feel like I'm going to regret picking Havertz. Oh, do I just go for Elise and... Elise and Raya? Rather than Henderson and Havertz? I don't know. Or do I just go Havertz to Erdegaard? <laughs> oh, that's such a tough one. Yeah, maybe you do take it into account. I'm, I'm debating it myself. Erdegaard should definitely be safer for minutes than Havertz, but I just think Havertz has the upside. Oh, but Erdegaard is great. I'm not sure. Darwin and Mignoz or Van Dijk and Mateta or Trent and Mateta. 
Uh, I think Van Dyke and Mateta would be my favourite uh, option there. Um, here for FPL says, been on your current 11 since last night. Great minds think alike. I like it. Who's better for attacking data, Robbo or Gabriel? Very close, but Robbo's got greater overall attacking threat. But Gabriel's is goal threat and Robbo's is assist threat. So if you're looking to grab yourself a goal, it's Gabriel. I'm losing my voice. One sec. Sorry, chat. I'm actually losing my voice. If you, if you hear my voice break like a like a small girl, then it's because I'm starting to lose my voice. Let me talk a little bit quieter and slower. Buy one of Havertz, Eze, Luis Diaz for this week. Eze. Munu, Munoz, Munoz, I still can't pronounce his name, or Mitchell. Uh, Mitchell's got more assist threat. Munoz has got more goal threat. Jose Sar or Pickford? Pickford. Luis Diaz and Mateta or Elise and Darwin? Luis Diaz and Mateta or Elise and Darwin? Um, oh my God, my ADHD kicked in so bad. If anyone's seen Always Sunny, I just started singing Dayman in my head in the middle of trying to read your question. I won't sing Dayman to you, but if you've seen Always Sunny, we watched that episode last night. And that is just replaying in my head. I'm sure it's replaying in Pickle's head as well. Luis Diaz and Mateta or Elise and Darwin. I think Luis Diaz and Mateta is better for me. But it's also, I think the other pair have a higher upside. I think it's useful to decide what kind of manager you are. Are you a risky manager? Do you prefer minutes? Do you prefer upside? And go from there. Oh, I really don't like this. I would not be at all surprised to see Havertz and White on the bench against Wolves and I'm literally selecting them in my team. Do I just go for Erdegaard and Saliba? Chat, tell me why I should or shouldn't go for Erdegaard and Saliba. Don't do Havertz to Elise. Imagine only having two attackers from the best two teams in the better fixtures. Sounds awful. Yeah, I agree with that, Frosty, but what about Erdegaard? Nightman. <laughs> <laughs> Nightman cometh. Um... <laughs> like there's people in the chat doing that, yeah. Uh, I, I was going to try and hit that note, but after having a sore throat, I don't think I'm getting close to that note. Safe and boring. No upside. Boring. Because you're boring and I don't subscribe. Okay, thank you. I needed that. I needed, the, I needed you to peer pressure me into taking risks. Oh, okay. Uh, you've got just over 20 minutes till the deadline. White, Gabriel, who would you say has more attacking threat? Gabriel. Ariola to Henderson or Raya minus four, Neto on my bench. Um, I just play Neto. I'd play Neto. Yanis says, thoughts on Trent also doesn't have a start. I don't know if Havertz will start. Thoughts on Trent? Really fine. He'll get at least one start in the double. And in that start, he might outscore your entire defense. He's that good. But I would always try to back a player that I think has slightly more chance for starting twice. I say that, if you told me now that White and Robertson both miss a game, I'd be gutted, but I wouldn't feel particularly hard done by. I'd go, yeah, I just, they are also both risks. So maybe I'm sat here and thinking, why am I not going for Trent? If I'm going for two risky players anyway, I just think slightly more likely that you'll get White and Robertson having two starts. Huang to Elise for a minus four. Oh, that's close. Just about yes. And Robertson or Van Dijk? I prefer Robertson. Scored a bomb with Saliba on FIFA. It's a sign. There you go. Pick him. I love I love looking for signs like that. <laughs> looking for the confirmation bias. I'm locking in Gabriel and Erdegaard instead of Havertz and White Thoughts. Yeah, Paul. In all honesty, a better combination. <laughs> I just think if I do get lucky, you're not lucky, but get it right and White and Havertz do start twice, I think they are a really nice combination. I don't buy into this Erdegaard loves to score against Wolves kind of narrative. It's a different game every time. Don't th I don't think you can say... I don't think you can say comfortably that... Sorry, that engine's really that put me off. I don't think you can say comfortably that because Erdegaard scored against Wolves in the past, we'll do it again. You know? Elise hat trick incoming, I'd cry. Isaac has Crystal Palace, pal. Nice. Don't remember talking about Isaac. Oh, 
Are we looking past Saka captain? Uh, no, you can consider it, but I don't think we're looking past it. You're what? Who? Okay. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. Only people on free hit will have Erdegaard. So having him with secure minutes is a differential without the risk of going for Havertz. Oh, Havertz versus Erdegaard is driving me insane. I don't know. Havertz can play two roles, so more likely to play, no? This is what I thought. I think if Trossard or Jesus start as the number nine, surely Havertz just drops into midfield. I know they could play Jorginho, Rice and Erdegaard, but in a game like Wolves... Do you need Jorginho Rice? Can't you just swap Jorginho out for um, for Havertz? Rice, Havertz, Erdegaard, Martinelli, Trossard, Saka. I'm going to go Havertz, I think. I'd, I'll be more angry if Havertz hauled than if Erdegaard hauls. It is. Uh, that's not necessarily the best decision-making process, but you know what? Like, FPL is about having fun and having positive mental health associated with it. Like, you don't want FPL to drive you crazy. And I, you have to think about what would upset you more. On free hit, differential Bruno, fifth mid, and Oli, Mateta bench. Yeah, Bruno and Oli Watkins could outscore a lot of my doublers. Absolutely fine. No issues with that. I know you're boring, but Captain Eze. I'm not... Excuse me. This is not a boring team at all. I've got no Gabriel. I've got double attack... Vast rather than double defence. I've got Robertson. I've got Brereton Diaz. I don't think this is a boring free hit. It's not stupid. I've not gone for crazy. Puns. Anyway, your question. Um, Captain Eze. Yeah, fine. Again, if I, I go back to my... This is the one that I always tell Pickle. My decision-making metric sometimes is, what would annoy me more? Will it annoy me more if Eze scores like six goals and I captain Salah, or if I captain Eze and Salah scores six? I'll be more, cap I'll be more peed off by the, the latter. Erdegaard or Havertz? There is no point you asking me that question. I'm literally going out of... My, I pulled all of my hair out. I had a full thatch of hair before this stream. Um, so I don't know. Elise Pickford or Brereton Henderson? Brereton Henderson, because that's what I'm going for. Uh, but I think that's very close. Elise Pickford, probably better on paper, honestly. They probably are. But I'm going for the others. Minus four, eight Nuri to White or start Branthwaite? Start, I'd start Branthwaite, I think. Can't wait to see Saka fake limping after stinking. <laughs> no comment. But yeah, he does seem to get the limp when he, he as a stinker, doesn't he? I've never seen Saka limp after a game that he plays well in. Interesting. Should I... St <laughs> no, you can't You can't hate on Saka. The Arsenal fans come after you. Should I transfer Dubravka for a minus four and for who? Maybe to Henderson or someone like that. But... I mean, if Dubravka makes some saves, then you, you need a clean sheet and saves from the... Maybe. It would be for Henderson or Ryan or Allison would be my, my real options I'd be considering. Hi, Ross. Why not double Arsenal defence? Just doing it a bit different, Dally. I know other, other reason. Chris in the chat just says dog farts. Very nice, Chris. Chris, are you the person that says dog farts in every chat? Because <laughs> I'm just reading through looking at F FPL questions and I just get the random dog farts. You know where um, you, know where you live, Ross? We're coming for you. We know where you live, Ross. We're coming for you. What for? Oh, for the Arsenal Saka comment. My bad. I I um I revoke my statement. No, nah, really, I love Saka as a player and as a as a person. I think he's great, but I don't I don't like the whole limping when he plays badly, which is a, a thing that happens. Don't forget, party would wouldn't be surprised to see him play. Do you think against Wolves they play party Rice and Erdegaard? Maybe. Everyone thinks Havertz isn't going to start. Oh, why are you stressing me out, chat? Why are you stressing me out? Uh... Oh, no. Maybe I do go out of guard. 
the thing is, just because he doesn't start isn't the end of the world. You say that about Whitey. What do you mean? No, Whitey wants to start both of the clean sheets, really. But for an attacker, if they come off the final 30 minutes... But Whitey does have quite a bit of attacking touch. You don't expect the defenders to come on and get an attacking return normally. Whereas with an attacker, I think you do. I, I, I don't... If Havertz is benched, if he gets 20, 30 minutes, he, he could still do damage, especially if Wolves are shattered. Because I, I would bet my house that I don't own that Chelsea... He starts against Chelsea, right, Havertz? It's the Wolves game. But 20 minutes off the bench against Wolves could do so. I think I'm going to stick with it. If you're risking Havertz, why not Saliba instead, instead of Wyatt? That's not a risk. That's the opposite of a risk. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's like counteract the risk. No, I might as well go all in on the risk. Wyatt versus Gabriel attacking data. Gabriel's just got more attacking data. By the way, we've got just under 15 minutes till the deadline. For anyone dropping super chats from now onwards, I try to say the same every week now because people get really upset. There is no confirmation I answer it. Okay, because it gets a bit manic. In the, especially we get team news. These last 15 minutes get very manic. So from now on, do it at your own risk. Start Palmer at 8 Nuri. Palmer. X Blackburn legend versus rival Burnley equals hat trick. What is happening? Oh, Brereton Diaz. Perfect. I'd love a Brereton Diaz hat trick. If Brereton Diaz so much as gets an assist, I'm going to go mental. <laughs> I, just, I just want something from him. Anything. I hope so. Apparently, um, he won the last Burnley game. The United Burnley game. No shirts, no luck packages with Burnley. So I'm risking it. So Good. I like that. I like more people being put off. Amigo, what would you take for your top cap Diaz? Oh, oh, okay. Um, to Captain Diaz, what, like Brereton or Lewis? I wouldn't captain either of them. It would have to take a lot. I'm not that spicy. Eight Neri to Van Dyke or White from minus four. I like both of those. Thoughts on starting McBurney versus Brereton? I just think Brereton's minutes are slightly more secure. Son for Diaz or Son for Havertz or another pick? Uh, either of those. Diaz versus Havertz is like a 50-50 for me. I've just gone Havertz because I like the combination of other players slightly more. Take a minus four for transferring Moniz and bench Palmer and for who? Uh, yes, Mateta. I would do that for Mateta. Or Solanke if you don't own Solanke. Virgil, Havertz, Mateta or Saliba, Elise, Darwin. I've got the first three and I don't have any of the other three. So Jeff C, I would say Virgil, Havertz, Mateta because that's the combo I've got. Havertz started every game since game week 23. I have a good feeling. Go for it, Ross. Thank you, Darren. Someone actually giving me some nice positive affirmation. I appreciate it. Sheffield United are going to struggle. All their defenders are injured, so doubt Brereton Diaz will even be able to get forward. Catch them on the counter. Catch them on the counter. Still debating that Gordon to Diaz minus four move. What do you think now? 0.2 tied up. I'm less convinced now, actually. I don't know how many more minutes Diaz gets over Gordon. And Gordon's good, although he is away. If it was at home, it'd just be an easy no. But ha Arsenal been in good form bar Villa. Why would Havertz be benched? It would only be if he genuinely needs a rest. I don't think Havertz gets benched due to tactical reasons. I think ha if Havertz needs a rest, he will get rested. But if he doesn't need a rest, then he'll start. But we won't know that because we don't have access to their physiological data that they collect, which tells us these things. They're looking at everything. They're looking at muscle recovery, cortisol. Like, I don't think you realise how insane the, the test they do to work out when a player needs a rest and not. And we just don't have access to that. So people can act like they like, oh, see how it's needed a rest. You, you don't know that. Like, no one knows that. Um, but I mean, you can, you can always try and predict it. That's Like I said, that's one of the, the, the hardest things about this game is predicting minutes. Sam says, hi, Raps. I love the content. Thank you, Sam. Mateta slash Diaz and play Branthwaite. Um, or Darwin Elise and play Branthwaite or take a minus four Darwin Eze Munoz and bench Branthwaite um, I like Mateta Diaz and play Branthwaite yeah yeah I like Mateta and Diaz although I do like Eze as an option yeah do you know what actually that minus four to bring in Eze and get Munoz and Dar maybe the minus four. I would say in order of my favourite options, Sam, Mateta Diaz, play Branthwaite, Darwin Eze Munoz, bench Branthwaite, and then Darwin Elise, play Branthwaite in that order. Yep, 
Yeah, I don't mind Darwin. Why go against Darwin? What about Darwin? Darwin's, yeah, loads of Darwin questions. No issue with Darwin at all. Darwin's great. For me, it just comes down to, it'd be like Mateta and Van Dijk versus Darwin and like Mikalenko. And I just think I prefer Van Dijk and Mateta. Darwin's been really bad recently. At some point, I expect that to improve, but what do you think about Gerbic Ger 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 as a punt on free hit for keepers? He's not keeping a clean sheet, but he could make a hell of a lot of saves. But I would rather back a keeper that I think has a chance for a clean sheet. I just don't see a one which keeps clean sheet because Burnley have been really good recently, actually, attacking-wise. So really, you just need him to make like 20 saves in this double. What made you go white over Saliba slash Gabriel? Uh, attacking threat, early subs, which I think are a good thing as long as he makes it to 60, and he's one of the lower-owned Arsenal defenders. Combination of everything. In terms of ownership, it's Gabriel, Saliba, White, Raya. So I'm going for one of the lowly-owned ones with some attacking threat, with the chance for an early sub, and just hoping that he comes off at 61 minutes in both games with attacking returns. That's the dream. But I also think he is prone to getting benched at some point. Raptor, is it true that Havertz is on nine yellow cards? That is correct, but after Arsenal played 32 games, the threshold was extended to 15. So now Havertz would need to pick up six further yellows to be suspended, which he will not be able to do in the next two games, or the next one game, I should say. So yeah, once the team's played 32 games, the threshold extends. So the only team that have not yet played 32 are Chelsea, so if Nicholas Jackson gets booked against Arsenal, he is suspended for two games. That is the only... And I want that to happen desperately. The reason I say that is because I think everyone on Wildcard will have Jackson otherwise. So I'd quite like him to get booked in this game. What is the Senesi yellow card situation? Same as... He's fine now. He's through it. He needs to get to 15 yellows. Kelleher to Allison for a minus four. I have Neto, but I'm concerned Neto could get benched. People have been saying Neto's going to get benched all season. He's, he's not. So I would just have Neto. Why Henderson over Pickford? I just I think the Crystal Palace defense is slightly better and I think their fixtures overall are slightly better. Oh, I hate I hate my team. I don't like it. But I don't think there is a combination that I do like. You you you've got to choose your battles and I'm missing out on players that I want but I think the the the, the stuff that I'm struggling the most with is Havertz Erdegaard and then no Gabriel. It's still those two Arsenal spots. I just think Saka Odegaard Gabriel is probably the, the the strong triple up that you should go for. I, I don't think there's... Let me just check Twitter, but I don't think we're getting early, early te any early team news because Arsenal actually don't play till half seven. So it would be very early to get Arsenal team news. Um, no, I can't see anything, chat. I mean, obviously, let me know in the chat if you do see, but um, I can't see anything. Do you reckon Luis Diaz will start? Yeah, I think Luis Diaz probably starts both, but I think there's a chance he only starts one. Why are you not selecting him? I like Eze Salah Saka. I also like a fun punt on Broughton Diaz. And if not Broughton Diaz, I think I'd want to go Elise. I like like a fifth punt. So it's basically Havertz versus Luis Diaz. So I could do like Virgil and Havertz to Luis Diaz and Gabriel. Arguably would be better on paper. But then that also just makes my team look like everyone else's. And I want to differentiate slightly. Again, I'm not choosing bad players for the sake of it, but I am choosing to differentiate where I find it's possible. Bench Haaland or Palmer? I'd bench Palmer and start Haaland. Darwin, Munoz, Robbo, or Mateta, Van Dijk, Robbo? So Darwin and Munoz versus Mateta and Van Dijk. I I've gone for Mateta and Van Dijk. People are asking me questions that, like, if, if I've done it in my team, I prefer that, right, inherently. Mun Muniz to Mateta for a minus four, bench one of Foden, Palmer. I'd be tempted to just start Foden or Palmer, to be honest. So torn on a minus four for eight Nuri. Feels like if I doubt eight Nuri, just playing Pau Torres for free is better. I, Pau Torres is getting you two points, realistically, maybe one. It, that's my prediction. 
unless you get a lucky clean sheet, which is lucky against a very decent Bournemouth side, or you get an attacking return, which would be even luckier. I mean, maybe you do just play for it and just hope you get like a 15-pointer from Powell or something. But on paper, that's a one-pointer, two-pointer. Five minutes until the deadline, you need to lock in your teams. Oh, chat, I do not like my team at all, I'll be honest. And I'm really upset because I really wanted to, but I just, I can't get the combinations right. I put certain players in and then I'm not happy with it. I think I'm going to regret going Ber Berrett and Diaz. I think that's where I've made the mistake. But I kind of want to back it because I think I'm only doubting myself because I'm like, I could squeeze... Like a, a, like a squeeze like Luis Diaz or Jota in there. But I'm like, Brereton could outscore them. So I also did contemplate, and I'm still semi-contemplating, but I just said that I think this is stupid, really, is going Brereton Diaz to Erdegaard and doing Ben White to someone else, Mikalenko. So go remove all of my Arsenal defenders and go triple Arsenal midfield. Because it's like, I, I've said this before, I'm gaining, I'm actually losing points if Arsenal keep clean sheet with this team. So why not just get rid of all the Arsenal defenders? Bradley out for a minus four or just play pal? I'd, I'd do the minus four. Bradley out for Min Mignon's probably. Yeah, that Gabrielle bullet head is going to break my heart. It will. I'm ready for it, though. I'm prepped. Hopefully Ben White can get an assist or something. Is it dumb to go all three, Saka, Erdegaard and Havertz? No, that's what I'm saying. I quite like it. But Arsenal keep one or two clean sheets in this double and your players don't get that many atta attacking returns to match it. I mean, that, that could go awfully wrong. I mean, like, you could get just battered. Ross, are you going Havertz or Erdegaard? I think, I think I'm going to stick on Havertz. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave it there. Sight's getting really laggy for me. I don't know if it's for anyone else. You've got less than three minutes until the deadline. I would probably at this point stop asking questions in case they don't get answered and just lock your team in. Wow. I do not like the situation that we're in right now. But this is the situation that we're in, right? Let's not complain. Let's be happy. We've got the free hit. I can choose whichever players I want. I've got to back it, you know? Let me just make sure I've got a screenshot. Um... Captain poll. Yeah, we could run a captain poll quickly. I think um, the site's down. Oh, site's down for a few people. I would get your teams locked in. If the site is down, try the app. Sometimes the app is up when the site's down. Um, captaincy poll. I'll do Salah, Saka, Eze, other, comment. Shazam's is great stream as always, but I have to leave before the real stream starts, I'm afraid. Have a great weekend, you two. Thank you, my man. I love you very much. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, and let me know how you get on over on Instagram. Drop me a message. Let me know how you get on this weekend. It is not down, bro. Yeah, well, it's not down for everyone, but it will be down for some people. It's not like a, it's down for everyone or no one kind of thing. Right, I put captaincy poll in the chat. Lock in your picks now. Yes, get your team locked in. Under two minutes until the deadline. Make sure that your team is locked. Ooh, I do not like this situation. I'm hopeful I can get a green arrow, man. It, it would suck to get a red arrow on the free hit. I'm not going to lie. This team on paper should get a green, but it doesn't always work out like that, does it? Havertz captain. I like Havertz cap. Oh, people are getting an, a server error. Oh no, the site's down. You got less than one minute. Try try the app if you have the app. Try the app if you have the app. People are getting server errors. That is a disaster. Site is down. Both are down. Oh no. <laughs> Get your teams locked in. Do you think double Arsenal defence and Henderson and Luis Diaz and Brereton Diaz is a good way to go? I think that on paper is the better way to go. Yes, I like that a lot. I think on paper, data-wise, that is probably a stronger combo than what I've got here. Yeah, go for it. Server error on the app. App is lagging. Apps crash too. Oh my God. Panic. Tony not in the squad. Says who? Oh, it's too late now. Hopefully that's wrong for those people that have got Tony. 
Same team as you, but going as a captain. Love it. It's just one guy saying Tony on the squad. So just took a minus 12. Wow. Wow. Right, we are locked in chat. Don't leave. I'm going to carry on streaming for a little bit. Don't leave. We'll carry on streaming and talk about stuff. But if you are going to leave, make sure you subscribe. Tony not in the squad. Source FPL Heisenberg. Why did he leave it that late to tweet? That's completely useless to everyone. Or did, have I only just seen that? Yeah, he tweeted it at 1.28. What are we meant to do with that? <laughs> Hopefully he didn't have that information the whole time. Hopefully he's only just got that and shared it straight away then. Right. I think we're done. Let me tweet out my team and we'll go to answer some of your questions. Did anyone watch the um, sprint race this morning? Is anyone awake for that? Or did you watch qualifying? I wasn't awake for the sprint race and I didn't watch qualifying, but I watched the highlights. Um, so yeah, poor Lando Norris. It was all too much for little Nando Norris. I always call him Nando, Nando Norris. <laughs> right, is this my team that I've got? Is that the right screenshot? Yeah. Cool. Right, I, th I think I'm happy with that. Oh, no, I'm not happy. But I'm happy, but I'm not happy. I'm happy, but I'm not like happy, you know? Don't like the team. Yeah, sprint race was actually great. Yeah, finally. I mean, for, how is Verstappen winning by 13 seconds on a 19-lap race? 19 laps, 13 seconds. And it gets worse because you realize that by, what was it, lap 8 or 9, he was still in second. So it's like in 10 laps, he made a 13-second advantage on Hamilton. It's filth. It's just filth. Yeah, he has the best car, but so does Sergio Perez. I I'm sick and tired of this best car. Verstappen is just insane. He makes like a couple of mistakes. They're not even big mistakes in the sprint qualifying, like SQ2, SQ3. And then... He just decides to go and just go, ah, I don't care if I start fourth on the grid. Let me win by 13 seconds. It's just... Ross, why do I have Ben Brereton Diaz in my team? I hate you. Just wait for his hat trick later. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have done it if I wasn't me. I'd... It's, it's more the fact that I feel like McBurney's going to do better. Yeah. Perez is just... I'm not going to say that word. I don't think Perez is as bad as people say. What, what season was it? Was it Perez in the Force India? Perez used to be... He can't have just lost all his ability. Perez is B-tier at best. I don't think... Maybe he's B-tier. He's not awful, though, Perez. I can see 35 seconds ahead for tomorrow's race, well, especially with him starting on pole. The only chance you have of Verstappen not winning a race is an engine failure, a puncture, or... Um, or getting like disqualified in like getting knocked out in Q3 and then starting at the back of the grid. I even think if you put Verstappen in P20, though, he'd win the race. He, <laughs> he beat Lance Stroll in a pink Mercedes. That was so funny. <laughs> that front wing looks an awful lot like a Mercedes front wing. Checo in the racing point was something else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was racing point, wasn't it? That's the one. Yeah, yeah, there will be um there'll be a wildcard draft coming at some point. Maybe I'll do a wildcard draft this weekend. Live on Monday morning or something. Ali Khan says, became a member today after following you, you for a while. Love your stuff. Thank you for the great content. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for becoming a member. I do appreciate it. Uh, welcome. Hopefully you enjoy being a member, and I do appreciate the support. God, I am hungry. Yes, I am starving. You hungry hungry gal. There's a lot of you still here today, chat. Almost 4,000 people. Thank you for being here. If you are wondering what I'm doing right now, after the deadline stream ends, we still stream for a little bit. And we just have a bit of a chilled chat. Sometimes it's absolutely chaos. Sometimes we talk about fetishes, believe it or not. Sometimes we talk about food. Sometimes we talk about F1. Sometimes we talk about eggs. It's all sorts of stuff. So feel free to chuck some questions in the chat and I'll answer just some of them at random. 
I'll take a swig of my water and I'll mute myself so that you can't hear me slurping. Screen. Um, we'll have a look at FPL Pickles team. No changes for me. If you saw it earlier. I want to see like where we differ. The three players are here. Odegaard, uh, Anderson, and Allison. So Ode so yeah, so you've got Odegaard, Allison, Anderson. I've got Havertz, Robertson, and Henderson. I do prefer mine, which is good. Otherwise, I should have gone for what you went for. And obviously, you prefer yours. Otherwise, you would have gone for what I for. Chat, who do we think? So, Pickle. No, let me let me run a poll. I swear to God, chat, if you say Pickle. I swear to God. Who do we think outscores who? FPL Challenge, FPL Challenge. Yeah, I'll do FPL Challenge in a second. Good, good idea. Start a poll. Um, which combo... Scores more more points. Allison, Anderson, Odegaard, um, yeah, if Anderson gets a bullet header. If Anderson scores a bullet header, I'm gonna lose it. Lose it. I actually told Haley yesterday not to buy Anderson. I was like, just pick Munoz. And she, I think she probably would have done because I told her. But um, Henderson, Robbo, Havertz. Right. Who scores more points? Alison Anderson, Erdegaard, Henderson, Robbo. I like Alison Anderson. Alison Anderson. Um, Henderson, Robertson, Havertz. I guess it comes down to if you think Havertz starts both games and if Robertson starts both games. Your combo is so much more nailed. So nah, chat, you're taking the piss. Nah, nah, you're taking the piss. Who do you vote for? You better not vote for yourself. Of course I did. You can't vote. That's corruption. It's supposed to be a democracy here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Chat's getting back on my side. Come on. Gherkin is always right. Hooray, pickle. Ross, show your full browser and type Portugal. <laughs> Chat, you're outrageous. I'm not falling for this. Type Portugal. Pickle swinging the votes. Pickle is elite. Pickle signing into all of our different YouTube accounts voting. Oh Alison Bullethead are inbound. If if I t I I swear to God, if Anderson or Allison get anything good, penalty it probably yeah, and it will probably be like a Mateta penalty. I oh, know who are they playing? Uh, Fulham and Everton. Okay, we don't have any Fulham or Everton players. Okay, we don't care. Yeah, I don't want a penalty save for you though. I need Robertson to deliver. R lost track of time and missed the deadline. Tried to click confirm on Palmer to Let the red arrow commence. Oh dear. Server went down. What the f? Yeah, I know. She's taking Andy's advice privately. Fair. I don't even know what Andy's team is. Fair. What would, what would Andy do? Don't know. You tell me. You tell me. What would Andy do? I don't know. You tell me. Oscar will be pissed. Schoolboy error. Last five minutes is always dangerous ground on a double game week. Apparently might have started flying over at Rizzo because it would crash. Um, I don't know whether that's true. Why would he leave his transfer for five minutes before the deadline? We weren't going to get updates on those two, were we? Oh, I suppose Frank we could have. But he said only 45 minutes anyway. Oh, Woski, you numpty. That is a schoolboy error. Especially because he wasn't really waiting for anything. Oh, no, he's he'll, fine. He'll find out when it, when it updates. I bet he's just, he's, he's probably, he's all right. I thought he was tweeting like, oh my God, like he doesn't even seem that bothered. That's probably fine. Frosty's, Frosty of 3K. Quite good actually, aren't you, at this game? 
Frosty, I swear to God, as to you as well, if your bloody team outscores mine when you're not on a free hit, you've got two singlers. You've got Darwin can't hit a barn door Nunez. FPL mate Captain Deze. Dear Lord. Good luck, Dan. I really don't like having no Gabrielle. I don't know why I did that. It was stupid. Oh, well. It is stupid, but... It's also the attacking move. Yeah. Try talking or eating with no teeth. Huh? You can kind of... Like, with no teeth. Yeah. What, to keep putting your teeth still? And you, like, shut them? Like a ventriloquist. I'm a, bit, I'm a bit of a toothy talker. Toothy talker. Tooth I think I can do it. I'm not me. I don't think I'm breathing well right now. No, I think like without maybe without showing your teeth. I don't know. Oh. You're a bit of a mumbler. You don't show your teeth. I don't know. If that was the question. I don't know. Why. I just read what Claudette said. How is this poll fifty-fifty? What are you saying, Sophie? Who do you think? No, oh, you're winning that. Oh, I said it was fifty-fifty. Sophie, who do you think? And remember that you're a member of my channel. <clears throat> okay. Just remember that. I chickened out five minutes ago and swapped white to Gabrielle after being on white all week. I don't blame you. Mine is the riskier pick, right? Because Robertson and Havertz could both miss a game. Through goes Raptor. <laughs> Through goes Hamilton. Ah, legendary stuff. <laughs> when are you going to have Stormzy back on? Uh, probably start of the season. I tried to get Stormzy on this month and he's in LA for like an entire month. Um, so his agent was um, just like, it's not going to work kind of thing. Um, so I think probably be in like August time, I reckon. Chat, there might be um, some new project starting very soon. You're going to love it. Got a good feeling. Someone asked if you'd rather have no hair or no teeth. Oh, kind of a moot question for you, actually. Claudette. Outrageous. No hair at all on my body or no hair on my head? No hair on the head, obviously, isn't ideal. No hair on the body, though. I don't know if I'd want no beard. No armpit hair. Armpit hair is very valuable. So is nose hair. So is ear hair. We need hair in those spots. Do you, do you used to do this? I, it wouldn't work for me now, but you know, like, you used to move your hair back and forth like, like a wig. Do you ever do that? Mm -hmm. Like, if you... Because you know your head moves, right? Yes. Like this. So if you did that with your hair, it would, like, move back and forth. It'd look like you've got, like, a... Keep doing that pose, looking big. Oh, thanks. Oh, these these arms here. <laughs> oh, oh, well, over over there. No, I'm joking. I'm not gonna be like that. <clears throat> Thank you though. I appreciate it. That's how he lost it, chat. Rude. Bro, the FPL website is not working. That's because the deadline's gone. It's because the deadline. Oh, I didn't sort out my deadline properly. Challenge? Oh, we can do challenge, yeah. Let's do challenge. I think I've already built a team ages ago. Um... Okay, that was my team chat. I built this ages ago, by the way. I'm just looking at it now and thinking, do I want to change anything? I think I'm pretty happy with that. Hi, Ross. What is your favorite day at the gym, i.e. push, pull, legs, etc.? I would say overall push, but more recently, maybe legs. I would say pull is comfortably my least favorite. The reason I say that is when I do pull day, because I don't really love bent over rows or anything like that, I'm just it's just a lot of machine work. Also, my, my triceps are significantly stronger than my biceps. So any sort of pushing movement, I'm much better at. So I would say push, but lately I, I like legs a lot. Boga was out for the next game, Ross. Oh, is he? Okay, let me sort that one. Oh. 
Who's the next best? Is it that um, um, Medo Hoja Hozovovic? <laughs> I think I nailed that pronunciation. Safety. I think you basically pick five players from Sheffield United because they've got like double points and a double game week. And then after that, you just fill out with other double game week players. Maybe I go. Hmm. Maybe I get Erdegaard in here so I feel a little bit better if Erdegaard hauls. But who for? Maybe just in this spot here. Maybe he outscores Hamer. No, actually, I don't want to do that. I don't know, chap. I think that seems okay. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Let's leave it like that for now. Ross is a big, bald bully. Where did this come from, Harry? I'm not a bully. You're the you're the you're the one coming in here and calling me a bald. You know. Just over an hour for this Brereton 20 pointer. I genuinely, really genuinely regret going for Brereton Diaz. <laughs> I don't know who told me it was a good idea, but I, I regret it. Do Sheffield United players get four times points if you captain them too? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. What's wrong with Brereton Diaz? Nothing. I just, um, you know, always ratioing me on Twitter hurts my feelings. I'm just, I'm just good on the old social. <laughs> I'm sorry, Harry. You know, I love you really. You know, I love you really. You've gone for the wrong Diaz, Diaz Ross. Did you not see my meme? Let me find my meme on, on Twitter. I forgot to even like Pickles tweet, bless her. All right. This is it. This is me this week. Got the Drake meme. The and then that's me. Luis Diaz. Actually, tell a lie. FPL Harry has Luis Diaz. He'll probably score fifty-five goals. The thing is with Harry, right? Hopefully, Harry's still here while while I roast him. Harry is just better at FPL than me. I'm hands down. In fact, he's better at FPL than pretty much everyone. But also, Harry's mistakes, and he does make them, just go so badly unpunished. Like, when he brings in a weird player, or let's say he doesn't own a really highly owned, really good asset, they always blank. And then, I don't know, I feel like Harry is coupled with the best possible manager in the world, but also the luckiest manager. And when you put those together, it's a perfect combination. Um, so, yeah, that's Harry. What did Haley do? This is my sister, if you're new and you don't know. Um, also, I think I can announce this now. Also going to be a short form editor for me next season. So she's going to edit short form content for me. Oh, she went for Anderson. Oh, nice. Yeah, she, she wanted Anderson yesterday and I told her to skip Munoz, but she went for Anderson anyway. Um, yeah, she's going to be a short form editor for FPL Raptor lo doing loads of short form editing for me. And yes, don't worry, I'm, I'm paying her. It's an, it's an actual job. It's not a family just do it for me please she vice captain mateta what a monster all right very nice let's get out cheeky i did cheeky like wait did you only did you only free hit with two liverpool no there's three liverpool harry Matt, harry do be blind uh nice compliment sandwich all, all the people getting Anderson and ignoring your advice. Honestly, Anderson's going to get a bullet header and I'm going to look like an idiot anyway. So, oh, sorry, I smacked the mic. Raptor, you're looking wham. Why, thank you. I do try my best. I spend 95% of my life at the gym, so that's good. Imagine a couple of months ago saying your free hit 34 success would rely on a Sheffield United player. I still don't believe that. Still don't believe it. Harry's going to roast you now for double Liverpool defence. Uh, probably. 
I'll roast myself. This isn't a particularly good free hit draft, I'll be honest. But Is that your girlfriend, Blood? Which one? My girlfriend's in the toilet currently right now, over there. Um, just coming out of the toilet. Nothing. Um, the person that was just on my screen, Haley, is my sister. I don't think we look that alike, do we? Do we look alike? I don't think we look anything, though. I don't see it. We've we've got a similar beard. <laughs> Roasting the sister, eh? Uh, we've got a similar beard, but other than that, no. If you took your beard away, you'd probably look quite similar. Maybe. Maybe. Possible. Free hits the team and says it's not a good free hit team. Why didn't you pick a good free hit team? Because it's boring, Harry. It's so boring. I can't do FPL boring. I, I'm pretty happy picking suboptimal players at least and not feeling boring. Classic Ross running five Twitter accounts and pretending it's his family. I've been accused of running my girlfriend's Twitter account that doesn't exist, my sister's Twitter account that doesn't exist, my nan's Twitter account that doesn't exist. Stormzy, when Stormzy first came into the community, people were like, that's just you. Imagine pretending to be Stormzy and thinking I could get away with it. I get accused of all sorts. Hades just going to use AI for your edits. Good. If she can find a way to do that, good. I, I wouldn't know how. 55% Raptor wins. Good. There you go. I'm better than you. What's that? <laughs> Did you zone out? Yeah. Uh, I'm winning the poll. Oh, that's cool. She's like, that's cool. But my rank's better than yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Nan one is 100% fake. Nana Raptor's probably watching right now. I'm hoping she is. Nana Rapture, if you're watching right now, she's not going to be, is she? I'm going to leave my hands here. If Nana Rapture, if you're watching right now, say something in the chat. I hope she's watching now. She, she normally is. Darling. Yeah, Na Nan, can you say like I'm here, darling, or something, if you are watching right now? My mum's usually watching as well. But maybe she's not now, because it's a bit later. My Nan doesn't like the late deadlines. We literally FaceTimed last night, and she said, I don't like the late, late deadlines. And I was like, oh, love you too, Nan. Gone now. Yeah. Normally it's like not even midday. Yeah, it's almost like 2 p.m., isn't it? Yeah. Mm, she's not going to say anything. My question broke Ross's stream. Damn. Is the stream broke? Huh? No. Oh, I don't know. Stream broke. Stream's dying. Oh, no. Okay it's, oh, my mum's here. Sam Sam Cantali. That's my mum. Hello, mum. Love you. Oh, my mum's here. That's good. Don't know when Anna Raptor is. She's been the stream off. <laughs> Nana Raptor's gone. Nah, not for me. I'm gonna make my mum a mod. Yeah. How does a moderator? Standard moderator. There you go, mum. Your your name now comes up more clearly for everyone when you want to say something. Um, log in, logged into the <laughs> logged into the wrong fake account. Yeah, true. It's cutting in and out. Oh, I'm sorry, chat. I'll probably won't stream for much longer. Your camera was glitching. Okay. Watching from Kenya, Ross. Big up to Kenya. Is your mum single? No, you can't be my dad if that's what you're looking to achieve. <laughs> Nana Raptor quit the stream to go do bingo. If anything, Nana Raptor's probably putting an accumulator on right now. The only thing that Nana Raptor loves more than FPL is putting an accumulator on. Okay. Betting. Yeah. <laughs> she bets on the 3pm games. Yeah. Spends hours on it. Hours on the stuff. Did you get your girlfriend and sister into FPL? My sister, yes, kind of. But also, the person that really got me into FPL is my sister's fiance, Luke. Um, so Luke got me into FPL, like, really, because we had, like, a bit of a rivalry. And then... Oh, Nana Raptor messaged. Good luck today, Ross and Pickle. I love you, Nan. My heart. Um, yeah, so I, I guess myself and my... My sister's fiance got her into it, but no, my girlfriend was already into FPL. That's how we met. She was in my live stream chat. Oh, Nana wrapped up my heart. Can't cope. Tell her to start a betting tips YouTube. Like when I say genuinely does serious research, like she writes down like the entire like League Two table, goals for, goals and against, does all of this stuff. She's she knows more than I do. 
messages now that the hands are down. My hands are here. You'd hear me. Look, this is me typing. You can hear me spamming my keyboard. You ready? That's me typing. Okay. Don't don't start here. Clearly pick a one the all. No, now now you're being accused of being my, pretending to be my nan. Mm. Um, could you make a wild card 35 draft? Absolutely. I'm not going to do that now, but um, I will do that. Can we have a family video? Maybe. Nana Raptor makes the best pancakes. She doesn't. I'll tell you what Nana, Ma Nana Raptor makes the best. Nana, Nana Raptor makes a, sorry, banging curry. We used to have Nana Raptor's curry on a Wednesday. Oof. Haven't had that for a while. What else? I just remember coming home from school. Nana Raptor used to always make me some lovely dinners. Now, what does Mama Raptor, what's my, fa oh, Mama Raptor's roast. Oh my God, Mama, I need a roast in my life. I literally FaceTimed my mum yesterday and I was like, I need a roast. <laughs> I haven't had a roast dinner in so long. When you move out and you no longer live at home, and especially when you live alone. Now, I'm not going to go through the effort of making a roast for myself. There's just no chance of it happening. Imagine it's just Ross on his alt, alt count tweeting from Hannah Raptor. That'd be sad, really, if it wasn't. I might actually my man. Oh, you're making me so hungry right now. I'm not going to lie. I'm starving. Starving. Whenever you want one. Thanks, Mum. Can you drive up to Nottingham and make me a roast now, please? Thanks. <laughs> Boo, I make a banging roast. You might make a banging roast, but no one's roast is as good as my mum's roast. And everyone should think that as well. Like everyone, Everyone's always like, nah, this person's roast is the best roast. Oh, to be fair, your dad's roast. Holy Lord. Because I only really like my mum's roast. Like I've had loads of roast around people's house. And you know, like when someone else makes a roast dinner, it's just can be a bit naff. I was really worried because Pickle's dad was like, I'll make a roast for you. It was actually very good. I, I respect it. Is the Tony Leak real? Apparently. Yep. Apparently. Yeah, apparently. I just captain Havertz, lol. Good luck. I hope it pays off. Genuinely, I really I need it to pay off. I'm visiting family from Knott's. Any places to visit except the Robin Hood Museum? Um, I'd visit the castle, Nottingham Castle. Um, I'd go for a walk along the canal. It's quite a nice canal. There are a few like really nice like parks around the area. Not like as in like playground parks as in national park kind of things. Kind of thing. Yeah, you've got the Arboretum in the city centre. I really like Colic Country Park, C-O-L-W-I-C-K. That's lovely. Um, Willerton Park, also nice. I've only been there very briefly once. I walked past it. I've not actually had a proper walk around Willerton Park. That's on my, oh, my camera's gone. That's on my list of places to have a, have a proper walk around there. Um, I mean, you've got Sherwood Forest, not far out of Nottingham. Hooters. No, I'm not recommending Hooters. South London play at 6 p.m. Are you check? Is it six? I thought it was eight. Oh my God, I don't know when my club play. Let me check. Fixture. Thanks for telling me that. I would have thought it was eight. I need to know when my team play. Oh, it's a seven for me. Okay, we we're both wrong. <laughs> 7 p.m. UK time. Yeah, yeah, we've made some changes. We're in a, th um, we're in a four three three. Let me get let me get my camera back on, and then I'll talk about more. Completely changed up the formation. Forget parks. Are there any good pubs? Oh, so many good pubs. Like, take your pick. Loads along the canal that are really really nice. If you want like a bit of a nice view and also a, a drink. Yeah, this is um this is how we're lining up for uh. Um, let me, let me just go one FF. Here we go. This is the way the team's lining up for this game. I'm going to in a 4-3-3. Might be men's one. Oh, by the way, there is a link in the description. If you want to, if you want to join one future football still, I would appreciate it. All you need to do, click on the link down below. Um, go onto your dashboard. As I said before, I haven't, even, I haven't opened my daily bonus. I can do that now. And then when you get to this part, you'll be able to select a club that you can support and just select South London support. I received 240 points. I could open a pack. Hmm. Maybe I'll do that on the next stream, actually. Um, have I entered my fantasy team? Sorry, chat. If you don't know what this is, this is a site called One Future Football, and I'm managing like an AI football team. I get a bit confusing, I know. I'm managing like an AI football team for this. But there's a fantasy game as well. I just want to make sure I've entered my fantasy team. I think I have. Oh, I haven't. Oh, I have. Oh, because there was a game yesterday. Oh, Florian Grava. Was it this morning? Oh, that's good. Sorry. 
<laughs> my brain's all over the place. Oh, it was nil-nil. Interesting. Oh, Paris drew with Tokyo. Tokyo are playing all right, actually, at the moment. Okay, Florian Grava, 73. Interesting. Okay. Very interesting. But anyway, yeah, we've switched to a 4-3-3, so hopefully that helps us out a bit. Fingers crossed. It's like a 4-3-3, 4-2-3-1. A Grondon's stats this week are looking well. Yeah, they've been trained up massively. Been in Nottingham for four years and only found out it's pronounced Colic and not as it's spelt Colwick. <laughs> I think it is Colic Country Park, yeah. I don't think it's Colwick. I'm pretty sure. How many meals do you have a day? Uh, two. Which isn't enough, I'm aware. But I, I eat quite big meals. I have a big lunch and a big dinner. I don't have breakfast. Unless I'm really bulking. What storms he's rank like compared to yours? I think he's like 20. No, I'm ahead of him now. I think he's like 10 points behind me, something like that. Oh, we've got the lineups. Please tell me Brereton starts. I'll actually cry if he doesn't. Completely forgot the lineups. Okay, he does. Whew. McBurney starts as well, as we expected. It will be the second game if he's benched. Um, Archer is on the bench. Ossil is on the bench. Yeah, I think one of those could come in. Um, okay, who else is it? Oh, Brentford. We can check if the Tony stuff is true. He must be injured, surely. Yeah, Tony's not in the squad. If you held on to Tony again, that's that's tough. I'm glad, actually, in my deadline decisions video, I said I think I'd sell him. Because you just, you just, we just don't know what's happening, what, what's going on behind the scenes. What's what's Burnley's team looking like, actually? Oh, no. Who are they? Yeah, they are playing Burnley, aren't they? Have Burnley got any injuries or anything? Murich, O'Shea, Taylor. Oh, okay, that's their strong, strongest team. Although Taylor's back in the 11. Taylor seems to be going in and out of the 11 a little bit. Okay. Fair enough. Nothing that surprising there, I don't think. Just signed up for one future football. What do I do now? Oh, two people said they signed up. Awesome. So if you sign up using the link below, once you go on to one future football, all I need you to do to support the club in the top right corner, whether you're on your phone or your laptop, there'll be like a way to get to your dashboard. If you click on dashboard, hello, load. Right now it says I support South London and I've got 585 credits, right? It already says that. But when you first go in, it will give you the option to select all of the clubs. And I just say, just say that you select South London as the team you support. Basically, I want to try and get as many fans as possible. That's, um, that's really the only task I've been set by the guys over at One Future. So the people that hired me, the One Future Football guys, have basically said, we're not asking you to get people to spend money, which is good. I don't have to try and sell you things. All I want you to do is just support my club. And that's really nice because it's an easy sell for you guys, right? I just have to say, I just want you to support the team that, I, that I'm managing, which I think is nice. So yeah, that's all you have to do when you sign up is just go to here and then select South London. You also get a daily bonus. And then there is a place where you can train when you get cards. You can train our players. So for example, Hassan Sabri is a South London United player. You can like train up his stats and that helps me. But we'll talk about that more in the future. For now, just that's, that's all I ask is that you support my team. My team. I think Tony is sold already. Yeah, to be fair, I think that is it. Hi, Ross. Hope you're well. I'm actually curious. Why did you name your channel FPL Raptor? Um, just mainly because uh, uh, Toronto Raptor. To <laughs> I'm so tired. No, I'm not. My brain literally just died in the middle of a sentence. I was following the NBA at the time. And so Toronto Raptors was the club that I supported. That was it. I still do support them. But I just don't watch any NBA anymore, unfortunately. I, like, I haven't watched a, an NBA game in like a year and a half. So... It was during lockdown at the time, and I was just watching a lot of NBA before lockdown, I suppose. Um, right, chat, I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. We've at least seen the lineups. We know that big boy BBD starts, so I think that's enough for us. I'm going to leave it there. I love you all very much. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'm going to go muller some food. Hopefully, Brereton and Diaz going to score a hat trick, and then we can all celebrate over on Twitter. So thank you for being here, and I will catch you probably Monday morning for, I reckon, a wild card. Uh, video. So if you're on Wildcard, definitely tune into that and I will see you soon. Bye.